Carolina. Coverage of the Northwestern Bank 400. The seventh stop on the that play a part in today's race. Yes, it could, Bob, particularly in the early part of the race because they didn't get any practice after they qualified, and normally they will make adjustments for the car for running in race traffic, plus the fact that it washed all the rubber off the track that they had put on during qualifying Saturday and, or Friday and Saturday. A new face covering the pit area for us this afternoon. Let's go down to Ron Kendrick. Thank you, Bob. It'll be close quarters here on pit road when the cars come in for their stops. Whether that stop is scheduled or unscheduled, we'll be here to tell you why they made that stop. And if the driver should happen to fall out of competition, we'll get them here to tell you what happened to their car. We're with Tim Richmond. He'll be starting in the 10th row. Tim, your comments on the race. Well, it's a long one. It's a nice day. It's going to be cool for us. And uh, for us, we're starting back here in the 10th row, I believe. And, uh, you know, we're just going to watch for some of the trouble at the start of the race. And and uh, stay out of trouble the whole race because it's a long one and there's a lot of a lot of things that go on that uh, like the wall comes up at you pretty quick and people happen to get into it and there's a lot of problems so we're just going to try to stay out of that and hopefully be there to end good luck to you tim tim richmond starting the stacy pack on the 10th row as we look at the brushy mountains we'll take this break and be back for our live coverage of the northwestern it's bank 400. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, and Ron Kendrick back at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. The weather is completely different than yesterday. Today, 69 degrees. We have a 15-mile-an-hour wind and not a cloud in the sky. It is beautiful. This racetrack is five-eighths of a mile in length. The curves are banked at 14 degrees, and the unusual thing about this racetrack is you actually drive downhill on the front straightaway by 11 feet, while on the back straightaway, you're driving uphill by 11 feet. And Ned, Jared, and I will be talking more about that in just a few minutes. The North Wilkesboro Speedway, ready for the Northwestern Bank 400. Here now is the starting lineup for today's event. In the front row, driving the Mountain Dew Buick from Franklin, Tennessee, car number 11, Darrell Waltrip, alongside Harry Gant in car 33, in the 7-Eleven Skull Bandit Buick. Second row, Terry Labonte from Corpus Christi, Texas in the Stacy Chevrolet, and Mark Martin, car 02 from North Liberty, Indiana in the Apache Stowe Pontiac. Third row, Bobby Allison in the Gatorade Chevrolet from Hueytown, Alabama, Ron Bouchard in 47 from Pittsburgh, Massachusetts in the Stacy Buick. Row number four for this afternoon's race, Ricky Rudd in car three from Chesapeake, Virginia in the Piedmont Pontiac, and Joe Rutman in 75 from Upland, California in the Raymock Racing Buick. In the fifth row, Dave Marcus from Wausau, Wisconsin in the Stacy Chevrolet and Benny Parsons in car 28 in the Stacy Pontiac. In row number six, Neil Bonnet, car 37 from Hueytown, Alabama, the Rogers Racing Buick and Jeff Bodine in car 50, the Perfection Connection Pontiac. In row number seven, Lake Speed from Jackson, Mississippi in the Yazoo Buick, Dale Earnhardt from Kannapolis, North Carolina in the Wrangler Jeans Ford. Row number eight, Butch Lindley in car 01 from Greenville, South Carolina in the GT Racing Buick and Morgan Shepard in car 98 from Conover, North Carolina in the Levi Garrett Buick. In row number nine, Tim Richmond from Ashland, Ohio in the Stacy Pack Buick and Jody Ridley in car 90 from Chatsworth, Georgia in the Stacy Ford. And in row number 10, the Petties on the inside in car 43, Richard Petty in the STP Pontiac and Kyle Petty alongside his son, car 42, also in the STP Pontiac, both drivers, of course, from Randall to North Carolina. Here is the remainder of the starting lineup in the 11th row, car 26, Brad Teague from Johnson City, Tennessee in the Food Country USA Chevy, Buddy Arrington, car 67 from Martinsville, Virginia in the Hills Racing Dodge. In the 12th row, Jimmy Means in the Broadway Motors Buick and J.D. McDuffie in the Max Stores Pontiac. 13th row, car 24, Lenny Pond in the Forklift Buick and Slick Johnson the Valentine Pontiac. 14th row, D.K. Ulrich in the Old Milwaukee Light Buick and Bob Shack in the Test Tube Oldsmobile. And finally, the 15th row, Bobby Hillen, 17 years old in the Hillen Drilling Buick and Ronnie Thomas in the Thomas Racing Pontiac. There have been only three drivers in NASCAR history to start at the age of 17, and Bobby Hillen Jr. is one of them. The other two, Cale Yarborough and Richie Panch. The pace car pulls off of the track. The cars come down the main straightaway, anticipating a green, and the green is out. We are racing. The Northwestern Bank 400 is underway. And Darrell Walter quickly gets into the lead, but here's Harry Gant trying to move up on the inside, but Walter pulls away to move into turn three. And Walter got off to an edge there as they cross the starting line, but he has his rear view mirror full 
battle of Harry Gant as they come down to complete lap number one. Terry Labonte running in third place. Mark Martin is fourth. Ron Bouchard running in fifth position. And sixth is Bobby Allison. The car is all moving smoothly through turn numbers one and two. It appears as we look back into the fact that uh, all cars are running rather well at this time. They're being led by Darrell Waltrip in the number 11 Mountain Dew Buick. Here he is completing lap number two. Still Harry Gant running in second position and Terry Labonte right on Gant's tail in number three. Gant looks to the inside coming off of turn number two down the back stretch. Cannot make a move and settles back into the second position. Bob, so, this is not one of the easiest racetracks to pass on. Early in the race especially, we'll have a one groove track. You'll notice that they're running very low in the turns. The groove will move up as the afternoon goes on, as the track gets a little slick on the bottom side, as they lose a little oil and water and get some rubber on the track. But uh, it's very tough to pass on, particularly early. Basically a three-car battle here. There's about two car lengths between the third-place car of Terry Labonte, number 44, and Mark Martin, who is now running in fourth position. Here's Benny. Dave Marcus making a move on Benny Parsons, moves to car number 71 around Parsons' 28 car. Dave Marcus, of course, was the winner of the most recent live tele telecast that we did at Richmond, Virginia. Dave Marcus in the number 71, J.D. Stacy Chevrolet. Benny Parsons right on his tail, though, in the number 28 car as they come down the straightaway and complete another lap. That battle is for eighth position. We see Marcus in the 71 and Parsons in the 28. They're two of the favorites here today in this race, even though they're back in the field a little bit right now. Still, Darrell Waltrip continues to be your leader with Harry Gant running in second position. Terry Labonte is third. Fourth is now Bobby Allison, who's beginning to move up a little bit. He's gotten around Mark Martin. Martin is running in fifth position. Then a little bit of a uh, interval before we get back to the sixth place car, which is being driven by Ron Bouchard. Seventh is Ricky Rudd. Eighth is that battle between Dave Marcus and uh, Benny Parsons. And running in tenth position at this time is Joe Rutman, who has moved from the Stacy stable to the Raymox stable. He's driving the car number 75 that has been previously driven this year by Gary Ballou. Down the back stretch, headed into turn number three. Now Darrell Walter with about a six or seven car length lead on Harry Gant with Terry Labonte right on Gant's tail in third position. Bob, you know they have a unique qualifying system here at North Wilkesboro. It took two days of running to actually determine the pole position winner. On Friday, during the first qualifying run, here's the battle for sixth and seventh position. Ron Bouchard in car 47 and Ricky Rudd in car number three. But on uh, Friday, Terry Labonte had the fastest time, and Waltrip was in the fourth position, or fifth position it was, but he came back and turned a tremendous lap yesterday, so when they took the average of two, they put him up front. Now this battle for sixth place, then, we are beginning to see a two-group racetrack already as Ricky Rudd has moved high on the racetrack in an attempt to pass Ron Bouchard for sixth position. He does so on the backstretch going into turn number three. So Ron Bouchard, or rather, uh, Ron Bouchard running in seventh position now and in sixth. Oh, and Dale Earnhardt is in trouble. Dale Earnhardt problems in turn number three spinning that car. However, he was able to keep the power, and he is still out there. We do have a yellow, however. So the yellow comes out for the first time on lap number 10 for a spin involving Dale Earnhardt in turn number three. Earnhardt has been one of the fastest drivers and cars on the circuit this year. Here he is coming into the third turn. Earnhardt tried to get on the inside of Joe Rutman, got the left wheels down on a little curbing there, simply threw his car out of control, and he spins it around. And, Bob, he was a lucky fellow there with all the traffic behind him, and he's sitting in the center groove that someone didn't plow into it. We talked to uh, Dale Earnhardt a little bit earlier today about this uh, racetrack and the fact that it's a short track. I don't mind getting there rubbing a little paint and uh, racing, but as long as it don't get too serious and get to banging, you know. But uh, you'll rub a little paint here and get real close and race real close here. We've, we've seen a lot of tempers flare at this racetrack. I guarantee you, it, it, uh, about halfway through the race and, and on, you know, everybody's hot and tired and they're running as the hard as they can go trying to finish the race. And uh, if you get to bumping along, then it gets pretty, your tempers are short, you know, it's easy to lose your temper that quick. Well, Dale Earnhardt was the first to trade paint this afternoon with Joe Rutman. And he is now in the pit area for a tire change. We are under our first caution of the afternoon. Ten laps completed. Darrell Waltrip is running in the lead with Harry Gant running in second and Terry Labonte third. We'll be back in a moment. Our first caution of the afternoon brought out by Dale Earnhardt. He's making another pit stop. Let's go down to Ron Kendrick. Dale Earnhardt has been in the pits four times now. 
They have problems under the front side of the car. They're trying to bend the spoiler back into shape. There's also something hanging underneath it. They've changed all four tires, and they've topped him off with fuel. With the short track, they have to get him out before the car so he doesn't get a lap down. And he has managed to stay on the same lap, I believe, despite the fact that he's been in four or five times. So, uh, Ned, problems with that car early. Yes, uh, when he got on his left wheel on the curb, he's coming into the turn trying to pass Joe Rutman. It bent that spoiler back, and sometimes a, a jolt of that sort can actually foul up the steering. They've looked at that. I don't think that that is a problem, but as Ron Kendrick pointed out, that spoiler was bent. We saw them banging on it. So apparently, they don't think they have it fixed yet because he's right back in the pits again. Bud Moore and the rest of the crew going to work on that front end again, and they're working on that front spoiler. And that is very important, even on a short track. Back when I was racing 15 years ago, we didn't even know what a spoiler was. But now it's a very important part of a race car because it has to do with the airflow into the engine as well as the airflow around and across the body. But he's back out again and still didn't lose a lap. Well, you normally think of aerodynamics on the super speedways where they're drafting and traveling at speeds near 200 miles an hour. But uh, certainly the aerodynamics do play in effect even on a short racetrack. Ron Bouchard in car number 47 is uh, running in the top 10. He had a problem, I guess, after the practice session yesterday because they changed the engine in that car uh, earlier today. And perhaps Ron Kendry can have a further explanation of that work earlier today from the pit. Ron? No problem. I'm now. They weren't changing the engine on the Ron Bouchard car. I checked with them. Basically what that was was a change from a qualifying engine, changing from a qualifying engine to the race engine. They had not had time to do that. Actually, no problem. As we watch Dale Earnhardt once again pull out of the pit area, we remain under a yellow, and we have been given the indication by the NASCAR official, Harold Kinder and the starter, has uh, told the drivers that next time around they will get the green flag and will be back to racing. The 10-lap rundown showed Darrell Waldrop in the lead with Gant second, Terry Labonte third, fourth was Bobby Allison, fifth Mark Martin, sixth was the number three car, Ricky Rudd. In seventh position, Ron Bouchard, eighth, Jenny Parsons, ninth, Dave Marcus, and tenth, was Joe Rutman. The pace car pulls out ahead of Darrell Waltrip and the rest of the field and will be coming into the pit area now as Waltrip and the others get on the accelerator coming off of turn number four and go back to racing. Here is the green flag. We're racing once again. Now we'll be watching Dale Earnhardt to see if he does have problems with that car as far as handling is concerned or whether he's able to move up through the traffic. He has a long way to go, Bob, starting at the back of the 30-car field now. He's already picking some of them off while Harry Gant is trying to make his way around the Darrell Walters. But Walters' car seems to be handling so well on the inside of the racetrack that he just simply is not giving Gant any room at all to run. We saw Ricky Rudd pass a little bit earlier on the outside, but that's going to be awfully tough for him to do at the speed that Walter is running. And he is taking up the right part of the racetrack, where the, it's the fastest right now. But I'll tell you a car we got to watch. It's the fourth one on the screen there, the green car. Bobby Allison, the car number 88. That car looked awfully strong in practice and qualifying. He's already moved from fifth up to fourth now, and Allison drives this track as well as anyone. He'll be a factor before this day's over. We're watching the battle for eighth position involving Benny Parsons, the number 28 car, and Dave Marcus in 71. Parsons is trying to position himself around Ron Bouchard in the 47. Allison, rather, uh, Parsons moving to the inside, coming off of turn number four here. Benny Parsons racing side by side with Ron Bouchard into turn number one. A good battle here, side by side on a virtually one proof racetrack off of turn number two onto the back stretch. And Benny Parsons is able to pass Ron Bouchard. And so Benny Parsons moves himself into seventh position. Benny Parsons running seventh. Bouchard is eighth, and he is getting a challenge from Dave Marcus in 71. He is moving to the inside and trying to challenge Ron Bouchard. So Bouchard is beginning to drop back a few positions here. There are so many cars in this field that are capable of winning, Bob. There has to be at least 15 cars. Jody Ridley, car number 90, just made an unscheduled pit stop while Dale Earnhardt was making his pit stops a moment ago. Ridley came in. They did some work on the right front of the tire car and changed the right side tire. He's back out there now, but he had to make that unscheduled pit stop under the green, so he's at least a lap down. Here is the leader once again, Darrell Waltrip from Franklin, Tennessee, in the Mountain Dew Buick. Darrell has won two races already this year on the Grand National Tour in Bristol and Atlanta. Let's go to this battle back in the pack involving Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, and Benny Parsons. This is the battle for fifth, 
sixth and seventh position. And quite a battle it is. Parsons moves on the inside of Ricky Rudd, trying to take over the fifth position as they move into the first turn. He's got the inside of the track, and right now that seems to be the fastest part of the racetrack. But Benny. Rudd hanging tight on the outside. Good battle here between Benny Parsons and Ricky Rudd down into turn number three in that area where Dale Earnhardt had a problem a few laps ago, but no problems for Benny Parsons as he brings the car off of the fourth turn. Now running virtually side by side with Ricky Rudd while Mark Martin shows the way in fifth that Parsons would like to take over that position. He first has to deal, however, with Ricky Rudd in the car number three, the Piedmont Airlines Pontiac. Again, side by side in turns three and four. Here they come to complete another lap. It is Benny Parsons still running side by side with Ricky Rudd. The first four cars are pretty much strung out with Waltrip, Gant, Labonte, and uh, Bobby Allison running one, two, three, and four. Fifth position here, Mark Martin in the 0-2, and this tremendous battle between Parsons and Ricky Rudd. And that is tight competition, Bob. Parsons is a, really a local favorite here. He was born and raised in Wilson County, North Carolina. A lot of his relatives still live in this area, and so a lot of them come out to watch him here. This is one of the tracks that he sort of calls his home track. Of course, he, there he gets around Rudd. Finally, Rudd either backs off or then he had a certain sudden spurt of speed there and moved him around. Now he has Mark Martin up there, who is a tough customer on this kind of a racetrack. Well, Mark Martin, of course, look at the two drivers in the field today who have indicated they want Rookie of the Year status. Mark Martin won a pole position in the Grand National Race last year in Nashville, Tennessee. Is a short track veteran, but he is passed by Benny Parsons. Parsons moves into fifth place. Now it is Ricky Rudd trying to get around Mark Martin, and so is Ron Bouchard. Ricky Rudd does move around, and it looks like there could have been some contact between Ricky Rudd and Mark Martin there in turn number four coming out of the straightaway. They absolutely did change some paint there. If you look on either of those cars, you see a different color. One on the right side and one on the left side, but that's typical of NASCAR Grand National Races on a 5-8 mile speedway. Sixth position belongs to Benny Parsons running first still Darrell Waltrip. Second is Terry Labonte. In third position is Harry Hand. And fourth position at this time is Bobby Allison. We have completed 35 laps. We're covering for you the North, Northwestern Bank 400. Back in a moment. Well, we'll present for you live coverage for the third consecutive year, the ESPN NFL Collegiate Draft, the most important off-season football event. We'll discover who will be the number one pick this year. Our coverage includes features on more than 50 top college players, expert analysis of today's events, and reports from uh, sites around the country. That's Tuesday, April 27th at 9.30 a.m. live on ESPN. The Northwestern Bank 400 continues, and we watch this battle here between Dave Marcus and... Joe Rutman, Dave Marcus just passed Rutman a few laps ago, and also in this battle is Richard Petty in the number 43 car. So we'll watch this for a few laps as Darrell Waltrip continues to be your leader. And Rutman and Marcus get together. Rutman almost lost the 75, but he gathered it back in. Here comes Jeff Bushman in the car 50. He goes out of the picture now, and Petty moves to the inside of Rutman with a little cheap metal up there, pops a little paint. And Petty now coming into the picture, he's had more success on this speedway than any other driver. As a matter of fact, his success is phenomenal here. He has finished either first or second in this race the last 12 years. And he would like very much to keep that record intact today with a win. Richard Petty in the number 43 STP Pontiac. That car is working well on the inside of the track, Bob, and that's what it takes here. And that's one thing that has allowed Richard Petty to have as much success as he has over the years. He knows how to make the car handle. Now, he's not too good of a qualifier on this racetrack. In fact, I think during those 12 years, he has never sat on the pole. But when the race gets going and the track gets a little bit slicker, he is tough to contend with, and we're seeing him make his moves already. He is running in 10th position at this time, and he is about to move around Bobby Hillen Jr. in the number 8 car there. As we indicated earlier, Bobby Hillen is only 17 years of age and making his first Grand National start this afternoon. So Richard Petty running in 10th place right now, the number 43, Teddy Marcus, is in 11th position. The leader, meanwhile, Darrell Waltrip, has begun to lap some of the slower cars. Here he is 
in turn number four, moving off of the turn onto the straightaway and about to put a lap on Jody Ridley. Right ahead of Ridley is Bob Shack in the number 97 car. The 24 car he just passed was Lenny Pond, and now he moves on the outside of Ridley, and that put Ridley at least two laps down because he made an unscheduled pit stop not too long ago, but Ridley having his problems here today. Jody Ridley did make a pit stop during that yellow that we had for the uh, Dale Earnhardt spin, and he is now a lap down as Dale Walter moves to the outside and puts a lap on Bob Shack from Lombard, Illinois, in the number 97 test tube Oldsmobile. Alfred Buick continues to lead our Northwestern Bank 400, driven by Darrell Waltrip. Still running in second position at this time is Harry Gant and the, I'm sorry, Harry Terry Labonte has moved around Harry Gant in just the last few uh, laps. So Terry Labonte is now running in second position with Harry Gant running third. Dale Earnhardt, we speculated, might have uh, corrected his problems, has moved into 13th position. So he has passed a lot of cars since that spin. He certainly has, Bob, and apparently did not hand affect the handling qualities of that car number 15. He's a tremendous short track driver and one of the most aggressive drivers on the circuit. He... Let's go to Ron Hendrick. He has uh, Bud Moore, who's the car owner of the 15. And we have a crash, crash up in turn number two. One of the cars involved was Butch Lindley, the number zero one car, also involved Lake Speed in the number 17 Yazoo Mowers car. That uh, problem occurred up there at turn number two while we were talking with Bud Moore. We have a replay of it. It looks like they tangled Lindley and Speed as they went into the turn. Speed spinning down to the inside. Lindley was able to keep his car straight. He drove it up on the outside of the racetrack, and he came on around. So it's uh, not too much of a problem there. Here's the leader in the pits, Darrell Walter, taking advantage of this caution period. The Junior Johnson crew going to work on it, and here's Bobby Allison, who was running in the fourth position in the Gatorade car. They're changing the right side tires, filling them up with gasoline, and you see one of the crew members making an adjustment on the chassis of that car, and the way that he's turning that crew, Bob, indicates that the car was a little bit loose. The left rear wheel was not getting the traction that it needed. Walter is away now in the car number 11. They changed all four tires on that. So the first pit stops of the afternoon have been completed by all of the leaders, including Darrell Waltrip. Was this about the time that they normally would have come in without this yellow? No, this is uh, much earlier than they normally would. In fact, they can go about 140 laps uh, as far as fuel is concerned. Here's Dale Earnhardt back in the pit. Here's uh, Richard Petty in the car number 43 in for a change of right side tires. But if they can go about 140 miles, or 140 laps, I should say, on a tank of fuel, both of the petty cars in the pits, getting right side tires from the of tank of gasoline. Harry Gant in the old bandit car getting left side tires, so is Benny Parsons. You can see his car there on the left part of the picture. He's in the left this caution period, too. But, Bob, they use this uh, caution period. They, they give it an opportunity to look at the tires after they take them off and uh, see how they are wearing and then make any tank adjustments that they might need to make. Bobby Allison and the others are back out of the racetrack. We are under our second yellow of the afternoon, but racing will resume in just a moment, and we'll be back for it. What's more natural than natural light? When the feast grows. Back at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, we had a chance earlier to talk with Darrell Waldrop, who is leading the race at this time about going for another Winston Cup this year. Well, we're really in better shape than uh, you might expect. It's like last week at Darlington, we finished uh, 22nd or 3rd and moved up a position in the points, and that's kind of hard to do. So uh, we're in 4th and uh, only 140 points out of first place, and that's a lot better than we were this time last year. Even though we're uh, having problems, we're still relatively close so we're not concerned yet we would like to get on track here and start finishing a little better than we have lately though we've had a couple. the green flag is back out and Darrell Waltrip stands on the button and pulls out ahead of the rest of the field Harry Gant is running in second position but he is the third car behind Darrell Waltrip cars come down to complete lap number 53 Gant running in second position but Terry Labonte in third running fourth is Bobby Allison in fifth position, Benny Parsons. Sixth is Richard Petty. And seventh position at this time, I believe, would be Kelly Rutland. 
Off of turn number four, here is Darrell Waltrip. Darrell's performance so far this year, he finished 20th in the Daytona 500, 27th at Richmond. He won Bristol, he won Atlanta, he finished 7th in Rockingham, and he finished 23rd at Darlington. The battle here involving the Gatorade car driven by Bobby Allison and Ricky Rudd in car number three. They have in front of them Jody Ridley in the 90 car who has already been lapped. And they are trying to put another lap on Jody Ridley and Bobby Allison trying to get to the inside, unable to do so. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd moves to the outside and Bobby Allison in attempt to pass, but neither car can pull off the pass, so they settle back in their respective positions. Now, it looks like Allison bumping Ridley as they come off of turn number four, trying to get Jody out of the way. Here on the front stretch, we'll see if Allison can pass in turn number one. He does. I and think he got the message that time, Bob. <laughs> a little uh, extra verbal communication there as Ridley tried to stay ahead of those cars, but finally moved over and allowed Allison to get by, Ricky Rudd to get by. Now Benny Parsons has also passed, and so has Richard Petty. Now let's remember that they made a chassis adjustment on Bobby Allison's car number 88. We'll see how it affects it. He's a very sharp individual on the chassis of an automobile. He knows what it means. So I'm sure that he communicated with his crew, told them what to do to it. They did it, so we'll see how it will work out. Good race for second position, and that involves Terry Labonte and Harry Gand, who have been going at it from most of this race so far. Labonte in the number 44 car to the inside. That's the Stacy Chevrolet. And Harry Gant to the outside in the Skull Bandit Buick. So good side-by-side -side racing here for second position. And it looks like that Terry Labonte will be scored in second position on that lap, which was 59. By the way, Terry Labonte was on the pole after the first day of qualifying. However, the fastest eight cars have to average their two uh, qualifying days, Friday and Saturday, and that's the reason that uh, he did not start on the pole today. Walter had a much better qualifying session yesterday that allowed him to move into the pole position. Terry Labonte, who, by the way, is the current leader in the 1982 Winston Cup standings at this point. He hasn't won a race this year, but he has finished very consistently. That has led to his being in first position at this time in the Winston Cup standings. Right behind him, Harry Gant in the number 33 Skull Bandit Buick. You can see Gant really twisting that steering wheel as it came off a of turn four. And as this afternoon goes on, that turn gets very slick as they lose a little water, grease, and oil. Uh, and mixed with the rubber they put down on the track, it really makes it slick. Here's a good three-car battle between Benny Parsons on the inside of Ricky Rudd. He takes that position away. And here's Richard Petty coming in with the STP car, number 43. Well, all kinds of racing here. The uh, first three cars are pretty much strung out, but then we get back to fourth position, uh, the position that Bobby Allison holds. Then everybody is jogging for position here. Bobby uh, Allison ahead of Benny Parsons. Then comes Richard Petty. Then comes Ricky Rudd moving off of the fourth turn. The car up high, the 0-1 car, is a lap car. That means that by Butch Whitley, one of those who uh, spun earlier today. Let's go back down for another report from the pit area, Ron Henry. We're with Gary Nelson, crew chief on uh, Bobby Allison Gatorade car. How's the car running for Bobby? Well, the car is running a little bit loose right now. We made an adjustment on the last stop. We're a little better, but not quite as good as we wish we were. What's he reporting about track condition? Well, the track has gotten looser than we thought it was going to. Kind of a surprise. We thought it would stay tight. We're adjusting for it now. Uh, I think we'll get it right in a few more stops. Okay, Gary Nelson, crew chief on Bobby Allison's Gatorade Racing Team. And Bobby Allison running in fourth position at this time, but being challenged by Benny Parsons. So the battle here for fourth place, Bobby Allison and Benny Parsons. Cars out on the back stretch, still running nose to tail as Butch Lindley in the car 01 moves into the pit area for some more maintenance and Ned the hood going up on that car indicating some serious problems. Yes, the car was not running up to Butch's expectations. We see Dave Marcus also going down pit road and unscheduled pit stop for Marcus. He'll pull in right beside of Eric Lindley is, but that's a bad sign when they have to pull the hood up. Here's that battle between Benny Parsons and Bobby Allison. Parsons now going on the outside, which is the long way around. And Allison battling down on the inside. Richard Petty almost going to make it three abreast. He said that would be a smart thing to do. So he's back home. We're watching the battle for fourth position as we have completed 67 laps. Benny Parsons, Bobby Allison, and Richard Petty all battling for fourth, that fourth spot. The leader continues to be Darrell Waltrip, second at this time 
is Terry Labonte, and third is Harry Gant, but this battle for fourth position is a good one. But it's also a good battle up front. If we get the cameras back up there, Bob, Terry Labonte has run down Darrell Waltram after moving around. Harry Gant, a few laps to go, so he is zeroing in on the lead. So battles for first position and also battles for fourth position. Here is the Bobby Allison and Richard Petty duel down the main straightaway. Petty tries to move to the outside now, and Bobby Allison cannot make the pass. Now tries him to the inside. Again, it looks like the cars touch as they come off of the second corner, creating some pain out there on this five-eighths of a mile racetrack. The next live race that we will do for you on ESPN will be two weeks from today. That will be the Talladega 500, the Winston 500 from Talladega Motor Speedway, the longest racetrack, and as a matter of fact, the fastest racetrack. The racing will be quite different. They'll be driving at speeds well over 200 miles an hour and drafting on each other. That's not the case this afternoon on this short, short track. Now, Darrell Waltrip has moved out ahead a little bit of Terry Labonte, has about an eight or ten car length lead as they go down the back stretch and complete lap number 71. Darrell Waltrip is the leader. Second position belongs to Terry Labonte. Third is Harry Gant. And in fourth position now is Benny Parsons. We'll resume with more coverage after these messages. I'm Johnny Rutherford, and this is Indy. 75 laps have been completed in the Northwestern Bank 400. Darrell Waltrip is the leader. Terry Labonte running in second position. And Harry Gant is third. We have been slowed by two yellows. Involving a spin by Dale Earnhardt early in the race. And then two cars, Lake Speed and Butch Lindley, coming together over in turn number two. All of those cars, however, were able to make pit stops, change rubber, and are back in competition. Darrell Waltrip's challenger at this time is the number 44 J.D. Stacy Chevrolet, driven by Terry Labonte from Corpus Christi, Texas. Bob, we see as they approach the turns, Walter pulls away as they come off of the turn, but going into the turn, Labonte picks back up on it. That means that he's driving deeper into the turn, but sometimes that's not necessarily the best way around the racetrack. If you back off a little bit earlier so you can accelerate earlier, sometimes that could be better, and Walter is using that concept now, whereas uh, Labonte is using the concept of driving deeper into the turn. The leader's putting a lap on Jimmy Means from Forest City, North Carolina, the number 52 Buick. Ned, this will be a good time to talk about this racetrack. We alluded to the fact that there is a decided difference in the front stretch and the back stretch. Driving down the front stretch, you are actually going downhill by 11 feet from the fourth turn to the first turn, whereas on the back stretch, you are going uphill by 11 feet. Can you notice a difference when you're out there driving? Yes, you can. And one thing that you have to be very careful of is not to get into the first turn too fast because you are going downhill. You turn, your engine turns four RPM, you're running faster, and it's awfully easy to get in there too fast and get you fouled up. By the same token, it, you might back off too early going into turn three and not get in there as fast as you need to. So you have to really concentrate doubly heavy all the way around the racetrack. Waltrip and Terry Labonte, first and second. Third position still belongs to Harry Gant. In fourth place is Benny Parsons. Fifth, Richard Petty. And Dale Earnhardt apparently has moved up to sixth position. So Dale Earnhardt, despite the fact that he spun early in this race and had to make several pit stops because of a bent spoiler on the front end, is moving up well and is now in sixth position right behind Richard Petty. Earnhardt is certainly, we mentioned earlier, that he's been one of the fastest drivers on the circuit this year. He's led more laps than any other driver. He has one win. He won the Rebel 500 at Darlington a couple of weeks ago. But in the other races that he'd been in, he was a dominating factor for a while before one thing or another might would happen to him. So he'd like to get back up front again if he possibly could. Butch Lemley is out of this race. He is with Ron Kendrick. Butch, uh, short day for you. What happened to the car? drivers that went to Nashville, Tennessee to race last night in a race. Butt finished in fifth place. Neil Bonnet won the race over there. And Waltram, I did not learn how he came out in the race. But boy, they have been doing a lot of racing this weekend. 
this is the battle for 10th position involving Morgan Shepard and Ron Bouchard. The battle for 10th. Morgan Shepard in that Levi Garrett Buick running in 10th position at this time. And right behind him is Ron Bouchard, who is the, the defending Rookie of the Year. He won the Rookie of the Year honors last year. Ron Bouchard, so far this year, has competed in all of the Grand National races. He finished sixth at Daytona, ninth at Richmond, eighth at Bristol, 36th at Atlanta, 16th at Rockingham, and 34th in the Darlington race. Morgan Shepard, right ahead of him, has uh, also competed in all of the races this year. Finished His best finish this year has been a third at Bristol. He is also known as a short track specialist. The lead continues to be held by Darrell Waltrip with Terry Labonte in second position and Harry Gant in third. There is the interval between the first and second place, the first and second place cars. Dave Marcus, as we indicated earlier, won the most recent race that we did for you on ESPN. That was at Richmond, Virginia, a very exciting race in which he was in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, things not as good for him today. He is in the pit area with Ron Kendrick. Dave, what happened on the car? Well, I think something happened to the engine. Uh, got a, a missed in it a couple laps, and uh, oil pressure started going down, so I just shut it off. Who's got the strongest car out there right now? I didn't hear it. Who's got the strongest car out there right now? Well, Darrell's car's running real good. Of course, Perry's running good, and, uh, you know, Benny Parsons' car looks good and strong, too, so it's pretty hard to tell yet who has the strongest car. Thank you. Tough break for Dave Marcus out of competition here in North Wilkesboro. Darrell Waldrop moving around the slower car here on the straightaway. That is Brad Teague. Right behind him still Terry Labonte running in second position. We'll have more coverage of this seventh stop on the Winston Cup trail. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, and Ron Kenrick back in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. We have completed 93 laps of a 400-lap race, and Darrell Waltrip is the leader at this time with Terry Labonte running in second position. We have talked throughout the race so far about how this is a handling racetrack, and naturally there are adjustments that can be made to these cars to make them handle better. Well, Ned Jarrett yesterday did a little bit of a report here on what adjustments can be made to make the car handle better. In watching a NASCAR Grand National race, or perhaps listening to a broadcast, you've heard the term used weightage, weight distribution, which is a very important factor in this type of racing. There's a number of ways that they can accomplish the weight distribution on a car. Of course, the first thing to start with is the four springs that goes under the car. And here we have four springs that would go under the car number 75, the Raymont car that Joe Rutman will be driving here today. The right front spring is the strongest. About 1,500 pounds is what the strength of this spring is. The left front would be about 12 to 1,300 pounds. Then the next strongest spring would be on the right rear, and then, of course, the weakest on the left rear. Now let's take a look at how they can adjust those springs and change that weight distribution. Now, under the hood, of course, where the front springs would go, the right front, they do have an adjustment on that coil. They put a wrench on it, of course, turn it. If they screw it down, that means that they're shifting weight from the right front to the left rear. If they're working on the left front, which has a very similar situation, it would be exactly to the opposite. And then, of course, the sway bar comes into play in the weight distribution, especially when the car goes into a turn. Most of the drivers would use a one-inch sway bar with a very strong arm on it, and it also has an adjustment on it. And as we walk towards the back, we can see that there are adjustment screws also on the rear coil springs. The term wedge was derived a number of years ago in the early days of racing when they were using the old model Fords with cross springs, and they would actually drive a metal wedge in to tilt the car to shift the weight from one side to the other. Now, the way they measure the weight now is by sticking a jack under the center section of the rear axle housing, jacking it straight up, and if the right wheel comes off the ground before the left wheel does, that means they have that much wedge. This car here has about three inches of wedge, which is about standard for a track like North Wilkesboro. The car used in that demonstration, the number 75 of Joe Rutman, he is currently running in 14th position, and he is battling with the number 50, Pontiac driven by Jeff Bodine and those drivers are in these cars for the first time. We have had a number of driver changes in the NASCAR circuit in the past week. Joe Rutman, of course, moving from the Stacy crew to the uh, Raymond crew here and 
Joe Milliken losing the ride to the number 50, and Bodine picking up the ride. Rutman apparently handling fairly well as he was able to sneak by Bodine on the inside there. As Joe Rutman now has moved up another position, he will be scored in 13th position now. The leader is Darrell Waltrip, second, Terry Labonte, third, Harry Kent, fourth is Benny Parsons, fifth is Richard Petty, and sixth position is Dale Earnhardt, seventh is Tim Richmond, eighth is Ricky Rudd, ninth is Bobby Allison, and tenth is Morgan Shepard. We have completed 103 laps to this point, and again, there is the interval between Waltrip and Labonte. There really is a difference in the straightaway speed of those two cars, Bob. As we noted earlier, Walter really accelerates off of the turns. Labonte is driving a little bit deeper into the turn, but Walter just has the speed, the horsepower that it takes once he starts off the turn as he left Buddy Arrington in the car number 67, moves around uh, the hill and driver, car number eight. Walter using the low groove in turn number three and four onto the main straightaway. Here is Bobby Hillen, Jr. in the number eight Hillen Drilling Buick. Bobby, Jr. from Midland, Texas, 17 years of age. Of course, his father owns some Indianapolis-type race cars, but uh, Bobby trying to work into the racing profession here on the Grand National Circuit. This is his very first race. And Ned, can you remember back when you drove your first Grand National race? Were you a little nervous? Were you a little cautious out there? I would say that I was, but I was older than 17, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'd had a little bit of experience, particularly in uh, uh, sportsman-type competition on dirt tracks around the country. In fact, one of the very first Grand National races that I drove was here at North Wilkesboro when the track was still dirt. That would have been back in the mid-1950s. I think the, pay the speedway was paved in 1956, but they had some great Grand National races here when it was dirt, as we see Walter move on the inside of Lenny Pond, the car number 24. Boy, he just is able to pass them where he finds them. But a fellow like uh, Hillam has to be, well, he has to be thrilled, first of all, to be here running with the greatest stunt car drivers in the world and to make the race the very first time, although he, he started next to last, but still it was a tremendous accomplishment just to make the field because there were some veterans that went home yesterday after qualifying ending before the rains came, and uh, they've been around for a long, long time, and here comes a 17-year-old at Beetle. Darrell Waltrip started from the pole position and is leading this race. Five of the 21 races have been won from the pole. Darrell would like to win here this afternoon. Back with more coverage on ESPN after this. Darrell Waltrip, Terry Labonte, first and second. Harry Gant is running in third position, but uh, right now it is a good battle between Benny Parsons and Harry Gant. As a matter of fact, Benny Parsons has moved around. Benny Parsons has taken over third position. Gant falls back into fourth. It doesn't look like Gant's car is handling the way that he wants to, Bob. He's tried the high groove several times. He's tried running down low. Uh, Parsons has been uh, running very good on the low groove of the track. Gant has been running a little bit higher, but now that Parsons has passed him, he said, well, maybe he's got the best way around this race. Back, let me ride down low. But you can see right there, he can't keep the car down. The car simply just won't stay down in that bottom groove, and that's what's costing him some time right now as Parsons moves up on well, Mark Parton put a lap on him. Harry Gant is from Taylorsville, North Carolina. Carolina, and Harry started outside of row number one in this race, second starting position, but is beginning to fall back just a little bit. Benny Parsons, however, is moving up rather nicely. Benny Parsons started 10th this afternoon. He, of course, hails from Ellerbee, North Carolina, and he has now moved into third position at this time. There is an interval of about a half a straightaway between second place Terry Labonte and Benny Parsons here, who is running in third place. Mark Martin in the number 02 car, who started up front in fourth position, has uh, had a few problems, been in the pits a couple of times, and so he is not on the lead lap. He is second in the Winston Cup standings at this time. Benny Parsons, who sat on the pole for this year's Daytona 500, and uh, Parsons' performance so far this year, he finished 26th at Daytona, third at Richmond, ninth in Bristol, fourth in Atlanta, third in Rockingham, and fourth in Darlington. Here, meanwhile, is the king of this racetrack, Richard Petty. He and Harry Gant perhaps use higher grooves on short tracks more than anybody else. 
and he is already starting to move up a little bit on the racetrack when we saw him earlier now he's coming off low that time as he comes off a of turn four but i think that he's using a higher groove between one and two let's see as it goes in there yes he's moved up about a half a car width and as the afternoon goes on we'll see richard Petty moving higher and higher but he has the ability the uncanny ability to detect where the fastest spot is on the racetrack he searches for it and finds it and then runs according Again, we tell you that in the last 12 years in this race, Richard Petty has finished either first or second. So uh, Richard Petty would like to keep that string alive. Here, meanwhile, is uh, Harry Gant, who's being challenged by Dale Earnhardt. And this is the battle for fourth position. So Harry Gant, uh, again, beginning to drop off the pace just a little bit, while Dale Earnhardt, who had a problem earlier, is moving up nicely. It doesn't appear as if that spin and the adjustments they made on the car, they had to take a hammer and beat that front spoiler around, but it looked like they got it back in good shape, Bob, because that car is handling well. Earnhardt doing a tremendous job of driving. And look how close he comes to the wall as he came off the front there. All right. Ned, if you could uh, explain how the problem with the spoiler would affect the car. Would it affect it in the turns and the straightaways or every place? It would affect it more going into the turn on a track of this sort because it, uh, it has, he finally moved around here again and has taken over the fourth position and now he's moving up on Mark Martin. But the pressure that the spoiler would, the wind pushing down on the spoiler would uh, hold the front end down as you're going into the turn and it just make it more stable. Well, Harry Gant uh, finished second several times last year, has not been that fortunate this year. Dale Earnhardt, look at him sneak right up on the back bumper of the number two car driven by Mark Martin. Now Mark moving to the inside and allowing the faster Earnhardt to get around as uh, Harry Gant also will take advantage of that situation as the cars come off of turn two. Both Earnhardt and Gant move around Mark Martin, and now Dale Earnhardt will set his sights on Benny Parsons, who is running third, and the interval is again about a half a straightaway between the third place car of Benny Parsons and fourth, driven by Dale Earnhardt. The leaders, meanwhile, continue to be Darrell Waltrip and Terry Labonte. They have been running first and second for most of the race so far. And again, we notice that uh, down the straightaway, it is Waltrip that's able to move ahead just a little bit, but in the turns, Labonte able to narrow the distance. Beautiful day here in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and a tremendous crowd on hand for this race. We have grandstands here, of course, on the main straightaway. There are grandstands on the back stretch, and all of them are filled. It is a great day. Well, as we continue to cover the Northwestern Bank 400, again, we'll remind you that Darrell Waltrip is the leader. Running in second position is Terry Labonte, and we'll take this break. Resume our coverage after this. Darrell Waltrip is moving around some of the slower cars, putting a lap on Joe Rutman here, going down the front straightaway into turn number one. Waltrip the leader, Labonte second, and Benny Parsons now running in third place. Boy, when you say some of the slower cars, Bob, they really are fast cars that he's running. He's just setting a tremendous pace here this afternoon as he moves on the outside of Ron Bichard's car number 47, and he does it with ease. That car is really handling beautifully here for this afternoon. So Junior Johnson, the car owner, and the rest of that Mountain Dew crew have really done their homework, as they usually do at every race, but particularly here at North Wilkesboro, which is home base for Junior Johnson. North Wilkesboro, of course, uh, as you indicated, very close to the garages of Junior Johnson. Darrell Waltrip, the driver, of course, hailing from Franklin, Tennessee, and always gets a big round of something when his name is introduced. He has race fans, and he has those that uh, don't think very much of him. There's always a mixture of boos and applause when Darrell Waltrip's name is mentioned at the racetrack. As we see uh, both cars now beginning to move up to the higher groove, Terry Labonte down the main straightaway, putting a lap on Lake Speed. And both of those cars beginning to move out now just a little bit and widen the groove in the turns. We've been noticing that most of the leaders, Ned, are beginning to move up toward that outside wall in turns three and four and in the first and second turn. Yes, they have. Traffic has necessitated that to some degree, but they'll find, too, that it'll be a little bit drier up there, as we mentioned before. They drop a little water, a little bit of grease, a little bit of oil, and it'll eventually get slick. And they'll just move a little higher where it's a little bit drier to run. Benny Parsons is taking a good high line back in the field as he can make his way up through there. But when he can, Waltrip still moves back down on the inside when he has no traffic to uh, contend with. 
Ron Bouchard and Joe Rutman are battling side by side out there. That is for the 13th position. That's for and a spin, and into the wall goes Ron Bouchard. He tapped the wall with the right rear of that car as he was battling with Joe Rutman. However, Bouchard is able to hold on and keep the car running, and he's still going to be in competition. But the yellow comes out. It's our third yellow of the afternoon. A spin involving Ron Bouchard, who did touch the yep. outer wall with that car, Ned. Yes, he did, and he did a tremendous job of bringing it back down, keeping it under reasonable control, and it doesn't look like it did too much damage. You can see the right rear quarter panel of the car bashed in a little bit. Here they are as they came around. They touched, just sent him into the spin, and Benny Parsons had to be sitting on pins and needles there for a moment also because he didn't know which way either of those cars were going to go, but fortunately they straightened out, left him a place to go. Well, Benny Parsons was very lucky there because he was following Joe Rutman. Now we have another series of pit stops. Here is the leader, Darrell Waltrip, into the pit area. Petty, however, did not come in. He's still out there on the racetrack and for the moment will be shown as the leader, but he undoubtedly will come in soon. And that's exactly the reason he stayed out on the racetrack is to be the leader. There's a five-point bonus to the drivers for Winston points anytime they lead a lap, and boy, they'll take advantage of this type of a situation. We've been noticing Jody Ridley's car number 90 in the last couple of laps uh, with some uh, some type of fumes or some uh, smoke from it. I don't know whether it's an engine problem, whether it's something rubbing a tire or what, but you can see smoke coming from that car on the left rear. Meanwhile, several other cars come into the pit area. And now Richard Petty. Petty did come in, so he yes. will be uh, scored as leader of that lap, but he's into the pits now. That's right. He led that lap, even though he was coming down pit road. He's still the start-finish line goes all the way across the racetrack, uh, across the pit road. So he did get credit for that lap. He gave him the five-point bonus, and so he's in being able to make his stop. Uh, and as indicated, four tires, it looks like, on Petty's car. As indicated, he is ninth in the Winston Cup points battle at this time. Now the crew goes to work on the left side of the car, replacing the rubber. You can see the NASCAR official there indicating that the car is pulling out of the uh, race, out of the pit area, onto the racetrack to go out with caution. Now Richard Petty is away, and right behind him, son Kyle. So both of the Petties in for pit stops at the same time. We are under our third yellow of the afternoon. Ron Bouchard spun and hit the wall up in turn number two, but was able to keep it going. That's the reason why we are under caution at this time. The leader at this time will be Daryl Waltrip, and still second place, Terry Labonte. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, and Ron Kendry covering the Northwestern Bank 400, and we'll be after this. Look, if you're an investor who's tired of being too late, too late when investments are heading up, too late when they're heading down, look, look ahead. Look into Barron's. Every week, Barron's gives you page after page of useful investment information, days, weeks, even months ahead. Well, all the leaders have been in the pit area or are in right now. Several cars still on pit road receiving service. Dale Earnhardt is the first car behind the pace car and will be scored as the leader, running in second place, Darrell Waltrip. Third would be, uh, would be Tim Richmond, and fourth would be Terry Labonte. That's the way the cars are lined up behind the uh, pace cars. They come down here to complete lap number 141. Bob, it'll be interesting to see when the green flag drops again. We've seen Earnhardt battling all day to get back up in the pack after having gotten back as far as 30th position after his spin there one time. It's, it was hard to tell whether he had the fastest car on the racetrack or whether it was Darrell Waltrip who was leading the race. So now they're up there together. Boy, this should be something when that green flag drops. And, of course, we'll also be watching Richard Petty in the number 43 STP Pontiac as he works his way up through the field and tries to keep that string alive of finishing either first or second in the last 12 years. Now, there are two races that are held here at this racetrack each year. The defending champion of this particular race is Richard Petty. Second last year in this race was Bobby Allison, and third was Darrell Waltrip. They also run a race here in the fall, and last fall, that race was won by Darrell Waltrip with Allison finishing in second position, and Joe Milliken was third. The cleanup continues on uh, the second turn as the pit crews are out there. Now we have a conference here in the Junior Johnson pit as they've got their heads together trying to decide perhaps, as you wonder, Ned, is Daryl the fastest car out there or is Dale Earnhardt? Well, I'm sure that they're discussing it. Of course, they have looked at the kind of tire wear that they're getting and uh, wondering how many more laps they can go. Will they need to change the left side tires again or exactly what uh, will have to happen? Now Junior is talking to Daryl on their two-way radio. 
so they they don't go to sleep once those uh, pit stops are made boy they evaluate everything that has gone on up to that point talk it over among the crew and then uh, plan their strategy for the balance of the race and again the track cleanup crews are still out there so we're going to be under yellow for a few more laps we'll take another break the leader at this point in the northwestern bank 400 is dale earnhardt second Darrell Waltrip, and third, Tim Richmond, 141 laps. Travel with time. The drivers have been told that they will receive the green next time around. This is the situation to this point, 144 laps completed. We have had three leaders, Waltrip, Petty, and Earnhardt, four lead changes, and three caution periods. The leader at this point is Dale Earnhardt, and right behind him is Darrell Waltrip. The cars line up two abreast. The Slower cars to the inside, the faster cars to the outside. Here is the green. We're back to racing on the 145th lap. Dale Earnhardt pulls out ahead of Darrell Waldrop. The car between the two is Joe Rutman. Now Waldrop trying to get around Rutman on the back stretch is able to do so. Right behind Darrell Waldrop is Tim Richmond, who took over this ride last uh, race at Darlington and apparently has the seat in that car for the rest of the season. Dale Earnhardt Earnhardt. Making, he's taking a good line around the racetrack, Bob, and he's able to take the line that he wants to while he's out front. We'll see if Walter can close in on him. He'll run a little bit deeper into that turn. Now, Walter is still working very good right down on the inside of the track and has moved right back up on his bumper. Walter still keeping Earnhardt in his sights and, in fact, trying to move to the inside here in turn number two, going down the back stretch. Dale Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip battling for the lead here in turns number three and four. Here they are, off of the turn, onto the straightaway. Darrell Waltrip moving to the inside. Can he pull off the pass? No, he cannot. Earnhardt will be scored as the leader of that lap, but now Waltrip pulling right alongside Earnhardt in the second turn. Off a bit down the back stretch and nosing ahead by three quarters of a car length is Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip takes over the lead from Earnhardt. Let's see if he'll be scored as the leader of this lap. Yes, he will. Darryl Waltrip has moved ahead of Earnhardt and has established himself as the leader once again. So perhaps we have answered the question, Waltrip, the fastest car on the racetrack. Down to the Junior Johnson pit once again and Ron Kendrick. Junior Darrell just took over the lead again. You were having a big conference here with the rest of your crew. Is there a problem? Now the tires right there are showing a little bit loose. and it seems to help, so we're probably on the right track. No problems whatsoever, then? No, sir. Okay, that's the word. Darrell Walter, crew chief, Jimmy Johnson. I'd say they're on the right track, Bob. <laughs> he's it's got that thing out front. Certainly does appear that uh, he's uh, having any problems out there. Meanwhile, Morgan Shepard just got the black flag. We noticed smoke coming from that car. Could he be dropping oil on the racetrack, Ned? Yes, he very well could be. It looks like that... Uh, smoke is coming from the exhaust on the right side. A tough break for Morgan Shepard. He expected to run very well here uh, in this race because he's a short track special. But now they look like it's coming from the right front. It is coming from the right front. So Buddy Parrott and the crew going to work changing that right front tire, but there's something that was causing that smoke. Now he's going to go to work in there. Apparently the fender was rubbing against the tire, so a very tough break here. He must have seen another car out there, pushed the fender in just a little bit, and that's where the smoke was coming from. But a very, very costly pit stop here for Morgan Shepard having to do all of that work during the green flag run. And once again, evidence of what can go wrong on short track races where you're trading paint and bumping and banging with other cars out there. Darrell Waltrip, the leader, second position is Dale Earnhardt, and third is Terry Labonte, running fourth, Tim Richmond, and fifth is Benny Parsons, and the battle for second position now involving Terry Labonte to the inside of Dale Earnhardt as they move into turn number three. Labonte right alongside Earnhardt. Labonte with a slight advantage coming off of the fourth turn, and Labonte moves around Earnhardt just for a fraction of a second, but they basically stay side-by-side side all the way around the racetrack. A good side-by-side -side battle here for a second on the 155th lap of this 400-lap race. Terry Labonte now able to get that car completely around Dale Earnhardt, and Labonte moves back into second position. Earnhardt, who was the leader a few laps ago, has dropped back to third, but is he just playing it cautious because there's a long way to go, Ned? Well, it's hard to believe that Dale Earnhardt would play it cautious. He likes to run out front, even though he has uh, tried to change his driving strategy a little bit in recent races. His car owner, Bud Moore, there's Morgan Shepard as he back out in the running 
team now after making that unscheduled pit stop. But Bud Moore had talked to him and told him, said, hey, you got to be smart in these races. They're long. You can punish the car too much. And uh, it could be that he's uh, taking a little bit easier right now, letting those fellows run hard out front, let uh, Labonte buy so he could chase Walter down and make him run Walter hard. And that could work to his advantage later in the race. Out of three or four car length advantage that Darrell Waltrip has over Terry Labonte at this point. As we indicated earlier, Terry Labonte leaves the Winston Cup point standings at this time, going for the championship. We ask him about it. Well, I don't know. I've, we got off to a real good start this season, and uh, the cars run real well all year, and we finished all the races. And naturally, when you finish all the races and run pretty good and have some good finishes, you're going to be up good in the point standings, and that's where we're at right now. Terry Labonte, second position in that J.D. Stacy Chevrolet. Terry hailing from Corpus Christi, Texas, is 25 years of age. He started this race this afternoon. Up front, as we indicated, he uh, had the fastest qualifying time on Friday, but didn't have such a good qualifying average yesterday, and so therefore he did not start on the pole. Battle between Richard Petty and Ricky Rudd out there with a veteran Petty with the uh, relative newcomer Ricky Rudd. And right behind them uh, would be Harry Hand, and this is the battle for sixth, seventh, and eighth position involving the three cars of Richard Petty, Ricky Rudd, and Harry Gant. Petty's car still working very nicely down on the inside of the track now as Gant moves on the inside of Rudd. Once you get out of that groove, there's another car there that can move right on the inside. I'm sure that they made some adjustments on Harry Gant's car during that last pit stop because, as we pointed out, he was having trouble keeping the car down in the turns, and there he and Rudd touch. As they come down the front straightaway, didn't bother either of them. Gant still trying to get him around him, and a good battle there for that position. Rudd accelerating off the turns on the high side gives him a little bit of momentum, but Gant driving a little bit deeper going into the turns. Well, Ned, how much uh, contact can you make out there traveling at this speed on this size racetrack without getting in trouble? It depends a great deal on the portion of the racetrack that you're on and the position of the race car. If the car, if you're coming off the turn when you're almost out of control anyway, the slightest cap sometimes can spin you around. But if it's on the straightaway or in the dead center of the turn, sometimes it doesn't bother you quite as much. But they expect it on a track of this sort, know that they're going to get left together and uh, sort of condition themselves at least mentally for you. 164 laps completed. Here's the rundown. Walter first, Labonte second. It is Dale Earnhardt running in third position. Fourth is Tim Richmond. Fifth, Benny Parsons. Sixth, Richard Petty. Seventh, Harry Gant. And eighth, Ricky Rudd. ESPN presenting live coverage today of the Northwestern Bank 400 from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. ESPN presents its first live PGA telecast from the Lakewood Country Club in New Orleans. First round Thursday, April 22nd at 3 p.m. noon Pacific time live. Second round will be on April 23rd at 3 p.m. noon Pacific time. The third round on Saturday, the 24th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 o'clock Pacific time. And then final round coverage Sunday, April 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern time and 5 p.m. Pacific time. Tom Watson, the defending champion, hopes to repeat this year. Join us for our first PGA telecast from the Lakewood Country Club in New Orleans beginning on April 22nd. Darrell Waltrip and Terry Labonte are still showing the way in the Northwestern Bank 400 from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. These are the drivers that are watching from the sidelines. Slick Johnson, Dave Marcus, Butch Lindley, Bob Shack, Lennon Pond, and Lake Speed. Those drivers have dropped out of competition so far. We have completed 171 laps, not quite halfway through this 400 lap race. The leader, Daryl Waltrip, Terry Labonte, right behind him, coming down the straightaway here, crossing the start finish line. They're putting some laps on some of the back markers, moving around the number 25 of Ronnie Thomas from Christiansburg, Virginia, in a Pontiac. Ronnie, 26 years of age. Benny Parsons and Tim Richmond, meanwhile, are running side by side out there. This is the battle for fourth position, Benny Parsons and Tim Richmond. Richmond looked so good at the Darlington uh, racetrack. The first ride he had with the Stacy crew, and he is trying to prove himself as a top-notch Grand National driver with this crew. He, of course, a former Rookie of the Year at the Indianapolis 500-mile race. 
Tim Richmond devoting most of his time, however, to the Grand National Circuit nowadays. They prayed a little paint there, too, when uh, he passed him. Both of them wobbled just a little bit, but uh, again, nothing too serious. We saw on the right side of Carson's car as he came around just after he got around uh, Richmond that there was some blue paint on the side of that car. Now he begins to pull away a little bit. Richmond driving deep into the turns, driving a very good, smart race here again today. And these two drivers a few seconds ago, when they were in turn number four, as you indicated, got very, very close together. Rutman to the outside, or rather, uh, Richmond to the outside, and Parsons to the inside. But look how close they are going at speeds uh, well over 100 miles an hour. As a matter of fact, they touched coming off of that fourth turn. Now they've settled back into a uh, single file situation. Here is a problem with the Brad Teague automobile in the pit area. I was not watching, Ned. Did he uh, pull the car to that direction or exactly what happened? I think he did, but I think he had a fire under the hood. He has gotten out of the car and they do have the fire out now. There's uh, Lake Speed pushing his car back out. He's been in for several laps. He's going back into it, but the firemen are still shooting some of the spray under the car of Brad Teague. Teague was a late model sportsman driver before this year, so now they're shooting it in the trunk compartment of the car. So he's had uh, some fire under there. Brad uh, finished second in the NASCAR late model sportsman point standings last year, decided to go for rookie of the year this year in the Western Cup Series, but he's running second right now for Mark Martin in the point standings. And all of that action in the pit area so the green stays out. Tim Richmond, will he drive at the Indianapolis 500 or in Charlotte? We ask him about that. Well, it's kind of a, I guess you could say, backup uh, possibility. Uh, you know, if some unforeseen uh, something or another happens, you know, I'll have something to go with uh, come May. Uh, but the you know, way it stands, I'm pretty sure I'll be at the World 600 instead of the Indianapolis 500. And Tim Richmond uh, apparently going to stay with the Grand National Division for a while. He uh, certainly is in a position here, Ned, to prove himself with this great machinery that he's driving for J.D. Stacy. Yes, he is. That's one of the best cars on the circuit. As we see Terry Labonte moving in close on Darrell Walter once again. But Richmond has progressed about as quickly as any young driver that I've seen come on the circuit in a long time, Bob. Uh, this is his third year, I guess, uh, actually only his second to full year, and he has uh, been able to land a top-notch ride that quick. Most of the time, the drivers go five, six, seven, sometimes 10 or 12 years before they get an opportunity of that sort. But I'll tell you, he not only appears to have a lot of talent on the racetrack, but he has uh, some other things going for him also, and that is he's a good-looking fellow, he's very articulate, and uh, he's... He dresses nice. He does all the things that a sponsor would like to see their driver do. He makes a good appearance. And public relations now is an important part of this business. 30,000 race fans are looking on here at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. A new record attendance for this race. And they are getting their money's worth, believe me. It is Waltrip and Labonte running first and second. Look at Harry Gando move way high on the racetrack. Ned, he has those right tires clear up in the gray in the turn. Yes, he does. And that, uh, the fans who have seen Harry Gant drive this track before and several others know that it's not too unusual to see him doing that. He really, it takes a lot of gall to run up that high. Sometimes, you know, some rubber and debris can be thrown up there and before you hit that stuff, it's just like hitting on marbles. And Gant has no hesitation about getting up there because it cost him right there as Ricky Rudd was able to move on ahead of him. Well, then it would seem that since he is really running a longer race here because moving to the outside, uh, you do have to run a little little longer, I suppose. Uh, does that uh, use up more fuel? Well, it might use up a little more fuel. I don't think that it would be significant as far as that part of it is concerned, but it does not put quite as much pressure on your tires and doesn't heat them up quite as much as when you're running down low. You pinch it down a little bit and then uh, have to accelerate harder off of the turn from the inside, and that does tend to heat the tires up more. So there are advantages and disadvantages to it, I guess. We were watching the battle for seventh and eighth position. Ricky Rudd in the number three, Piedmont Airlines Pontiac, and Harry Gant in the Skull Bandit Buick. The leader continues to be Darrell Waltrip with Terry Labonte running in second position. We talked a little bit earlier about the championship, Champions Park Club rookie standings. Mark Martin is the current leader in that standing right now. Back with more of the Northwestern 400 after this.
Welcome back to ESPN's live coverage of the Northwestern Bank 400 here at the North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. We're with Brad Zing right now. Brad, you had some problems, and the problems were on the road. What happened? Oh, the rear end caught on bar. I, I smelled him smoking about 50 laps ago, and then he finally caught on bar. Looks like an awful lot of fender banging going on out there. Yeah, they are. The track's pretty slick. You've been out there now. Does Darrell have a strong enough car to hold on for the rest of the race? Uh, I think Darrell's the man to beat. Okay, Brad Zing with problems on Ben Rooney. He's out of competition. Rear end burn up on the car. Brad Teague is third in the rookie standings at this time behind Mark Martin and James Souter. Darrell Waltrip, Terry Labonte, and Dale Earnhardt are the first three with 191 laps completed. The battle for eighth and ninth position is between Harry Gant and the number 88 of Bobby Allison. Now, Allison was running up among the leaders earlier, but apparently a problem with that car also. He has dropped back now to ninth place. That car certainly is not working as well as I thought it was going to here today. Uh, Bobby looked awfully good in practice on Friday and uh, yesterday, and Bobby was down this morning. He felt very good about it, but as we heard Gary Nelson, the crew chief on the car, say that the track was different from what they expected it to be. The track was what he said tighter, and uh, or was not quite as tight. In other words, it's quicker than they thought it would be, and their chassis setup just simply is not working as well here today as the bike for it. Bobby Allison has had an interesting year. He won, of course, the Daytona 500. The next race that we covered live for you from Richmond, Virginia, the day before the race, his car went through the retaining wall in turn number one and was almost completely destroyed. The crew did go to work and get the car repaired in order for him to compete in that race at Richmond. But Ned, does an accident like that set back a team? Well, that team is big enough and experienced enough have the personnel that they need that it would not affect them as much as it would one of the lesser teams. But yes, that, uh, as many races as we had in a row there for a period of time, it certainly does affect the operation. But uh, they were able to come out of it. In fact, they performed what I thought was a miracle that night. It got that car back on the racetrack the next day. Well, we were quite surprised, to be quite honest with you, to see Allison in the starting field for that Richmond race because the car was just an absolute mess after he went through that guardrail and came to rest very close to some bleachers in turn number one at Richmond. But here he is this afternoon running in ninth position in the Northwestern Bank 400. Let's run down the standings. Waltrip is the leader, Labonte second, Earnhardt third. In fourth place is Benny Parsons, fifth is Tim Richmond, sixth is Richard Petty, seventh is Ricky Rudd, eighth is Harry Gant, ninth is Bobby Allison, and tenth would be Neil Bonnet. And Bonnet is someone we haven't talked about. Uh, Neil Bonnet uh, is in this particular car for the first time this year. He is not necessarily a short track specialist, but uh, he is running on the short track here today in the number 37 Buick. We will return with more coverage of the Northwestern Bank 400 after this from North Wilkesboro. the leader, Darrell Waltrip. He has led most of the race here. There have been two other leaders, Dale Earnhardt and Richard Petty, but those uh, drivers have led only for very short periods. Darrell Waltrip has pretty much dominated this race to this point, and we were, are just slightly more than half over. The prize money in this race totals $181,390. The leader will pick up 16,100, second place 9,990, third place 6,200, and the fourth place finisher this afternoon will pick up $4,275. And Bob, that fourth uh, position there, $4,275, is exactly $275 more than the total purse was when I ran my first race here. Terry Labonte is the leader in the Winston Cup Series to this point. He has accumulated 952 points and $94,000. Benny Parsons second at 893 points and $96,000. Bobby Allison is third in points, but look at the prize money that he has won this year, $162,040. That, of course, because he has won the very rich Daytona 500. Like $120,000. Fourth place in the point standings is Darrell Waltrip, and he, too, 
has uh, made much more money than the first two drivers in the point standings because he has won two races this year but only accumulated 810 points. Morgan Shepard is fifth in points with 798 and then Harry Gant with 787 and Gant has won more than $58,000. Here's a good battle between Richard Petty and Benny Parsons. Petty in the car number 43 that he has made so familiar over the years and Benny Parsons now moving up on him in the car number 28 in the Pontiac Le Mans. Petty's running a Pontiac uh, Grand Prix. And this is the battle for sixth position. Richard Petty and Benny Parsons. 192 laps to go. We are uh, more than halfway through this race. They're putting a lap on J.D. McDuffie in the number 70 Pontiac. Out of turn number four onto the main straightaway. This battle for sixth position with Petty holding sixth at this point. And you can see how both cars do go much higher in those turns than they did earlier in the race and much higher also down the back stretch. Now they settle into turns three and four here as they keep a little bit lower groove in that portion of the racetrack. Richard Petty has 195 Winston Cup wins to his credit and is trying to keep his string intact here at North Wilkesboro of finishing either first or second position. Darrell Waltrip continues to be the leader with Terry Labonte running in second position, Earnhardt third. Fourth is Tim Richmond, fifth, Benny Parsons, and this the battle for sixth between Richard Petty and Benny Parsons. 212 laps completed now as this race has settled down to its middle stages. We have had uh, quite a bit of a green flag here instead of uh, the yellows. We've had only three yellows. One for a spin involving Dale Earnhardt early, then the Lake Speed and Butch Lindley spin, and then Ron Bouchard with the most recent yellow situation. He spun and hit the wall over there in turn number two. Waltrip and Labonte, and you can see the interval between the two cars as still Terry Labonte is able to keep Darrell within striking distance but not able, at least, to get into a position to pass Darrell Waldron. Well, you'll notice there are lots of stickers on these race cars as they traverse around the speedway, and Ron Kendrick had an opportunity to tell us more about those stickers. When the stock car goes by the grandstands, all you have time to see is the number on the side of the car. But there's some writing up front that's very important, very important to the drivers. These stickers aren't on here just for decoration. They're sponsorship stickers. These people not only provide products to the racing teams, but they provide contingency money for the top finishers in the race. For these folks, you might win $300 if you finish first, maybe a couple of hundred dollars if you finish second. Are those stickers important? You better believe it is when you're running a more than half a million dollar a year operation. On the side of Lenny Pine's car, we find that he has a, an additional sponsor, one that puts him on the winning team. Harry Gant in the Skull Bandit Buick is running at this point in uh, seventh position. And Ned Jarrett has a very special guest up here in the broadcast booth. Ned? Bob, we looked over to our left here in the grandstand, and there sat a fellow out there that uh, we thought would be up here in one of the big VIP suites, or maybe down in the pits. It's Hal Meadle of Hollywood fame. Of course, he's uh, is well known now to race fans around the world and he owns that car number 33 he and Burt Reynolds that we see going around there and talk about that sponsorship and the half a million dollars sometimes that won't get it with it I, I gotta tell you something if they think the half a million I need to hire their crew because I tell you I can't get by for that much myself yeah but you come from Hollywood it, it costs more money you know when you when hey, you're a big I, star no, I'm not gonna go for that I tell you what though if I can watch Kent just get up there and run run really tough and uh, hopefully he's going to win one. Uh, that makes it all worth it. I mean, I, it's just, for me to come down here and watch these people run, it's amazing what they do. Well, certainly, it's always good to see you around. Al, we did spot you out in the grandstand. You got on a radio set and everything. You're not really, you're there watching the race, but that's not the only purpose that you have. Uh, no, I'm sitting up here in the top, so anytime there's a wreck and my crew can't see it, then I can forewarn Harry what's going on. I can tell him the, it's a wreck in turn two, turn four, or whatever. So hopefully he'll... And I did warn him a couple of, a couple of cautions we had. I could see him when he couldn't or the crew couldn't. So it serves a double purpose. And it makes me feel like I've won it. He's been turned, running a very high line here lately. Of course, that's sort of Harry's style, but it does look like the car is working exactly the way that he would like for it. To. No, no, it isn't working good at all. They uh, they had the Jackson weight in, um, I don't know whether it's right front or, or left or whatever. They were jacking weights, and also they put a rubber in the string. But he's still having a problem. He said, 
He's not getting a good bite. He seems to be sliding high all the time. Well, right now, he's taking over the fifth position from Tim Richmond as he moves around on the outside. He looked like he made that very easy. How very quickly, uh, we know that you're planning another uh, movie, and it will be a racing movie. Are you far enough along that you can talk about it yet? Uh, yeah, I can tell you what it's about. It's a thing called Stand On It. It's from a book. And uh, so Bert's going to star in it. I'm going to direct it. And it's not really the history of NASCAR. It's a comedy action. And it's just, uh, we used uh, NASCAR and, and stock cars as the background. But basically, we're just going to do a, a fun action uh, comedy film. Well, we'll look forward to that. Thanks so much for stopping by. I know you want to get back out there to your work. OK, Ned, thank you very much. Al Nita joining us in the broadcast booth as we cover the Northwestern Bank 400 for you at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. There is your leader, Darrell Waltrip. And running in second position, still very, very close, and certainly not out of contention, is Terry Labonte. At this point, let's run down the standings for you. Dale Earnhardt continues to run third. Richard Petty has moved into fourth. In fifth position is Benny Parsons. Sixth is Ricky Rudd. Seventh, Harry Gant. Eighth, Tim Richmond. And ninth would be Bobby Allison. So those are the first nine at this point who completed 226 laps. Waltrip in turn number two, moving around D.K. Ulrich in the old light Milwaukee Buick. Ulrich, of course, uh, started in the rear of the field and has not been in a competitive situation this afternoon, but D.K. is one of those who uh, stays out there and finishes many races and has been very successful through the years on the Grand National Tour. 24 cars are still in this race. We started with 30. So that means that six have dropped by the wayside for one reason or another. Nobody, however, has dropped out of competition because of accidents. We've only had one incident of wall contact, and that was a rather light wall contact by Ron Bouchard, who was able to keep the car going and continue in the race. Bob, we talked a little bit earlier about wondering if Earnhardt, about when uh, Waltrip and Labonte passed him, wondered if he might be taking it easy. I'm beginning to wonder right now if Terry Labonte has not shown his full hand here yet this afternoon. He's able to pull up on Waltrip, but he sits there and runs about eight or ten car lengths behind him, as we see right now. He seems to be doing it with ease. Jake Elder, the crew chief on that car, knows what it takes to win a race. He knows that Junior Johnson and Darrell Walter are tough to beat in any race, and especially here at North Booksburg, since it is Johnson's home base. I wonder if he has Terry Labonte just sitting there and uh, and just cooling it right now and not showing their hand. Maybe they could run a little bit faster than what they're doing. Well, Daryl Waltrip right now is battling with Ron Bouchard, who is on the page. You can see how battered that car is, as uh, he did have contact with the wall, but obviously has had contact with other cars out there also. And, and the other car that he had contact with is right on his back bumper, that car number 75 of Joe Rutland. That is correct. So those two cars are battling once again just a, bit, a few laps ago, and we were following them just like this when one of them got out of shape, and it looked like that Joe Rutman was battling the steering wheel there, trying to keep it from happening again. Yes, they did. It looks like they made contact, and here they are again, and they are rubbing fenders there once again. See, this to come off of that turn. No love lost between those guys. Now, this is really not, they're not mad at each other, I don't think. <laughs> they're, they're battling hard. Well, they probably know that they are off the pace and not in a uh, real competitive situation, so perhaps they're just having a little fun out there, traveling at speeds well over 100 miles an hour. Yes. Joe Rutman and uh, Ron Bouchard. Well, we have completed now 133 laps. Darrell Waltrip, the leader, second place, Terry Labonte, and third place, Dale Earnhardt. It's a good race, and we've got a lot more to go for you. We'll be back in a moment. It looks like that uh, my helicopter is waiting to get me out of the racetrack tonight as we tell you that ESPN will present live for you from Dallas, Texas, the WCT Finals. Quarterfinals on April 20th and 21st at 8 o'clock, 22nd and 23rd at 9 o'clock. The semifinals, then on the 24th, and the finals on April 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Jim Simpson and Cliff Drysdale cover the action for you from Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. Join us for that beginning April 20th, WCT Finals. Darrell Waltrip in the Mountain Dew Buick is continuing to show the way here in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Darrell, 35 years of age from Franklin, Tennessee. 
and is the defending champion. His crew, the two crew, is uh, pretty relaxed. One of them smoking a cigarette, the other is looking out of the racetrack, keeping tabs on how their driver is doing. But he's doing just fine right now and has a uh, fairly comfortable lead uh, on two car lengths on Terry Labonte, but he's been able to keep that for the last few laps. Meanwhile, here is uh, Benny Parsons and Ricky Rudd, and as we look down our score sheet, we find that this is the battle for our fifth position with Benny Parsons holding it right now and Ricky Rudd right behind. Let's run down the standings as we have them. Of course, Waltrip and Labonte first and second. Third is Earnhardt. Fourth is Richard Petty. Fifth is the number 28 car that you're watching right now, driven by, by, by Benny Parsons. Sixth is Ricky Rudd. Seventh is Harry Gant. Eighth, Tim Richmond. And ninth is Bobby Allison. A lap down in tenth position is Neil Bonnet. Eleventh position is Morgan Shepard, who is also a lap down. Twelfth position belongs to Joe Rutman, who is two laps down. And thirteenth position belongs to... The number 50 car of Jeff Bodine, who is three laps down. And Ned, once again, we see that although Darrell Waltrip, obviously, with the fastest car on the racetrack, is not pulling away by any means on Terry Labonte. No, he is not. He's not. He's able to pull away from the rest of the field, but not Terry Labonte. He's just sitting there and looking so smooth, just watching Waltrip. There's, there's one thing that has surprised me a little bit, Bob. If he has enough to get up there and move around Waltrip, I'm surprised that he hasn't done it at least for a lap because he needs those five bonus points to go with the lead that he already has but uh, again they're here to try to win the race and maybe the strategy that they're employing maybe he can't do any better but i have a feeling as smooth as he's looking there right now that he might have a little bit left under the hood of that car all right ned we have run the past several laps under green when can we do you think anticipate the next series of pit stops well i think if it should go green the rest of the way that they should be able to get by with just one more pit stop and i think that that would come somewhere between the 275 to 300 lap mark and we have completed now 245 laps and of course we will continue our coverage of the winston cup trail throughout the year today with seven live telecasts this is our second live telecast the third one coming up in two weeks from Talladega, Alabama. Ned, that's a fast racetrack, but I guess you've never driven on it. That's one privilege I did not get. I quit before uh, they built that track. They opened it in 1969. I quit in 1966, and uh, it, I wish I would have had the opportunity to drive on that racetrack. Crew chiefs watching their drivers out there in competition. That, of course, is Jake Elder watching the action out there. Jake Elder, boy, I'll tell you, he's been around this sport for a while, but he is still considered one of the top men in this business, particularly with young drivers. He uh, was instrumental in Dale Earnhardt's uh, rise. He was instrumental in Darrell Waltrip after he came into Grand National Racing. And he just seems to have a special knack with young drivers and bringing them along. And, he, boy, he has a good one now. And Terry Labonte, as you mentioned earlier, he's only 25 years old, and he's been around for quite a while. already has a win at Darlington's a tough Southern 500. And uh, that's the goal that, that most race drivers, if they could just win that race, it would make a career for them. But he's not finished, I'll assure you of that. Let's give you a little bit of an indication of uh, the spacing between the first three cars. The difference between first and second place is about eight or nine car lengths. That is the interval there that you see on the screen. Now, the distance between second place Labonte and third place Dale Earnhardt is about a straightaway. So there is quite a big difference in the second and third place at this point. Earnhardt is still running very smooth by himself out there in that third position. And Bob, I'd like to uh, say hello to Bill Dennis, who is watching up in uh, Glen Allen, Virginia. Bill would like to be here racing today, but most race fans remember that he had a tremendous crash while attempting to qualify for the Daytona 500. In fact, he was very lucky to come out of it, but he is recuperating well, and we understand from his family that he'll be back racing within the next 60 to 90 days, and they want us to pass along to all of the fans who have written have sent money they have done everything he says imaginable to help contribute to his recovery and he says there's no way that we can contact all of those people and he said if you folks would just say thanks to those people we would really appreciate it so folks there you have it from the bill dennis family and we certainly wish bill a speedy recovery and hope that he's back on the racetracks very very shortly terry labonte second place fourth at daytona and a tremendous battle on that particular racetrack, and now he has engaged himself in a battle on this racetrack with Darrell Waltrip.
see that a car has moved between the two. That is uh, Morgan Shepard, but still Terry Labonte not uh, letting Darrell Waltrip get out of his sight. Well, the track record here for 200 miles or 400 laps is held by Richard Petty back in April 18th of 1971. On this date, 12 years ago at 98.479 miles an hour, that race was run without a caution. And we have had, of course, three of those already today, so we are probably not going to set a record for this uh, particular event. Well, here we see Bobby Allison moving on the outside of Tim Richmond in the car number two, and that's for, I believe, the eighth or ninth position, and Darrell Waltrip is right behind him. He's about to put a lap on those two cars, and either of them were potential winners and still are, I guess, to some degree, but uh, Waltrip is running so fast, and those cars, particularly Allison's not handling as well as they had hoped for it to, although he's able to move on the outside of Tim Richmond, but they are careful. They're about to go a lap down. And this is the battle for eighth position. Uh, Bobby Allison and Tim Richmond. Richmond was running well up in the top three or four earlier in this race, but has been falling back in the last few laps, now in eighth position. And Bobby Allison is right behind him, now pulls alongside him in turn number four, trying to capture that eighth position. Meanwhile, you can see that right behind Allison is the two lead cars, Waltrip and Labonte. So as you indicated, Matt, these two are very likely to be lapped in the next few laps. The Morgan, eighth and ninth place cars. Morgan Shepard is already one lap down as well. Who's on the outside of him? Remember, Shepard had that unscheduled pit stop when he had a fender rubbing a tire, so that put him a lap down, so he's about to go two laps down now as Walter moves on the outside of him. Bob, it looks like we have two distinct grooves on the racetrack right now. As we saw, Bobby Allison trying to move around Tim Richmond. He was trying to do it on the high side, was running pretty good up there. Richmond was dipping down low, but uh, they could run fast on either place, but apparently the low groove is still the best one if your car is working right, but uh, some of them are able to run high. It's a very comfortable day here in North Carolina as far as temperature is concerned, but Ned, the tremendous physical exertion that th these drivers have to undergo, obviously you're pretty well wrung out at the end of 400 laps. Yes, you are. You circle this track in uh, around 20 seconds. They qualify at about 19 and a half seconds, but they don't run quite that fast in the race, but somewhere around 20 seconds. And the concentration that I mentioned earlier, because of the downhill front straightaway and the uphill back straightaway, is very tiring in itself. Plus, the concentration on the other cars, uh, make sure that you don't get in the corner too fast. Here's Richard Petty coming into the pit, and this could be his last pit stop probably. I would have thought they'd have gone a little bit longer, a little longer before he came in, but he's changing right side tires on the STP car, number 43. Of course, they'll fill it up with gasoline also. All of them using the Union 76 gasoline racing gasoline in these cars. Petty still waiting for him to put the jack down. He's away. That's a good pit stop for Richard Petty. But that's going to put him back in the back. He's running in fourth position before he came in. But you can see him take off now. 15 and a half seconds he was in the pit. But now with those fresh tires on the right side, you'll be assured that he will take off because that pressure of the cool tires will make him on the A little bit of race strategy here, perhaps, as Richard Petty chooses to be the first among the leaders to pit. And now, obviously, when the others come in, he will be in a very competitive situation. Here is Darrell Waldron, still out there on the racetrack, but perhaps he is thinking pit stop also, and will be watching Waltrip and the other leaders to see when they will be coming in for a stop. Let's go to Ron Kendrick, who is in the Darrell Waltrip pit. Among those of the Junior Johnson today is Margaret Waltrip, Darrell Waltrip's mother. Mrs. Waltrip, your comments on the race so far. Northwestern Bank for 
hundred in a moment. The leader, Darrell Waldrop. Second position, Terry Labonte. Third is Dale Earnhardt. Six cars are on the lead lap with the Northwestern Bank 400 at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. This is Bob Jenkins along with Ned Jarrett and Ron Kendrick covering the action for you. Those six cars are Darrell Waltrip, Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, Benny Parsons, Ricky Rudd, and Harry Gann. Just a couple of laps ago, the seventh place car of Tim Richmond was lapped, and so Tim goes a lap down. Darrell Waltrip in the Mountain Dew Buick is dominating this race to this point. And out of the race, it appears, is Mark Martin in car 02. The Apparently the rear gearing let go of the car, Bob. He, he shut it off as he went into the first turn, coasting all the way around the track, but they're looking under the rear housing of the car. There is a problem sometimes on short racetracks because they have turned coasting all the way around the track, but they're looking under the rear housing of the car. There is a problem sometimes on short racetracks because they have to run such a low gear here, and the gearing turns so many RPMs, it's hard to keep the grease cold or cool enough for what it'll burn the gear up. We've already seen that happen, Brad. This car actually caught on fire from uh, getting too hot in the rear end. And so you see that problem more on short tracks than anywhere else. They'll go to Martinsville, Virginia next week, and it is a bigger problem there than at any racetrack in the You know, I noticed Mark Martin, when he made his last pit stop, was very slow getting out of the pit area, so that, too, could have signaled his uh, transmission problem. Mark Martin from North Liberty, Indiana, 23 years of age, and going for the Rookie of the Year honors this year. The Apache Stone Pontiac is parked in the pit area and is apparently out of competition. Harry Gant here in sixth position is apparently uh, moving up quite well. We've been noticing him the last few laps uh, going a little bit slower, but he has stood on the button here in the last couple of laps. Perhaps he was preparing for this, his pit stop. Here comes Harry Gant in the Skull Bandit Buick, number 33. His pit area is well down to our right. We'll watch the pit action here as the crew goes to work on the right side of the car with new rubber, and of course, still also being put into the car. We have to watch on him. We'll see how long it takes Harry Gant's pit stop. It was a good one, 12.7 seconds. That's a super pit stop, especially on a short track. Boy, that will get him back into running right quick, Bob, because those two tires, as you pointed out with Teddy, uh, it did pick Teddy up quite a bit, and so it will with Gant. Of course, the others will be coming in before too long, we would have thought they would go somewhere between that 275 and 270 and 300. Right now, we are as close to the 280 part. And exactly 281 laps have been completed, so two of the top six cars that are on the lead lap have pitted, namely Richard Petty and Harry Gant. Look Here at, is the leader, and look at him thread his way through traffic. Boy, he just threaded the needle and went right on in there. I'll tell you, you got to have a lot of confidence. you got to have a car that's really working well, too. He is trying to get around Jody Ridley in the number 90 car. And also Morgan Shepard here is another one of our top six. Dale Earnhardt in the pit area. It's been a long afternoon for Dale. He spun in the early stages of this race, made several pit stops during the caution period, but did not lose a lap and is, in fact, on the lead lap. And this, too, is going to be a pretty good pit stop. It's less than 17 seconds, 16.4. Dale Earnhardt, 16.4 seconds, and Earnhardt pulls back into competition. So now three of the top six cars have made their pit stops, and we are awaiting the leader, Darrell Waltrip, to see whether he's going to pull in this time. He does not. He stays out there off of the fourth turn, down in front of us on the main straightaway, completing another lap, but it isn't going to be too long, I'm sure, before Waltrip heads for the pit area. Bob, have you ever pulled into a service station, needed a tire change and a tank of gas, and get it in 16 seconds? Never have and probably never will. No, I doubt if you will either. It's amazing at what they can do in such a short period of time. It really is. 285 laps completed now. So we have uh, a little over 100 laps to go, 115 to be exact. Well, they won't be able to go the distance from here on, at least as far as the gasoline is concerned. But apparently they're wearing tires a little bit uh, more here this afternoon than they had planned on. Tires on to pick the speeds up. In fact, they get to where it's awfully hard to drive the cars when those tires get worn and get very hot. Jeff Bodine just made a pit stop a moment ago in the car number 50. He's back out there in the running. Walter still trying to pick up the Morgan Shepard. Uh, he has not been able to put that other lap on him. Morgan uh, had gone a lap down 
earlier when he made an unscheduled pit stop, but Waltrip now just content following Shepard around in the car number 98. Shepard won at Martinsville, Virginia last year, his one and only Grand National win. He won the pole position at Richmond, Virginia last year, which put him in the Bush flag. But he has been a contender. He's a past uh, late model sportsman champion. In fact, he only lives about three or four miles from where I do in Conover, North Carolina. A very determined young man. He wants to make it in this sport, wants to make it big, very expensive. And then that race that uh, Morgan won last year, we covered on ESPN. And, uh, I was anticipating a very jubilant celebration in Victory Lane, but instead, Morgan was virtually ill uh, after that race. The, the race was so taxing on him that uh, he was uh, to the point of complete exhaustion. Yes, he was, and I think a great deal of it was emotion, Bob. Yeah. And uh, remembering back to when I won my first Grand National race, it's a very traumatic experience, and especially to win a race like Martinsville your first time out. Neil Bonney is coming into the pits as Walter now moves on the outside of the car number 98 of Morgan Shepard. We see Terry Levine just staying right in there in second place. He seems so content running there in that position. Neil Bonnet in the pit area in the number 37 Buick. And Neil driving this car for the first time. We indicated earlier that he, in the past few years, Today. Now the fourth place car, Ricky Rudd, is coming into the pit. So these are scheduled stops. There's Rudd's uh, crew, Richard Childress, and the crew pitting gas from Piedmont Airlines car. They're changing the right side tires. We're watching from the left side here as they put the gasoline in. And as you can see, as they jack up the right side, it's hard to get it plumb full. And I doubt if they got that uh, completely filled, but uh, he was away. It's a good pit stop for him. And here comes the leader, Darrell Walter, coming in, and Junior Johnson and the crew ready to go to work. This is one of the best crews in the business. They'll make a good pit stop, I'm sure, unless they have some sort of a problem. And they'd like the others are changing right side tires and filling it up with the gasoline. You can see the clock ticking away up there in the right-hand corner of your screen. And he's away in 14 and a half seconds. A very good pit stop. Not quite as good as Harry Gantz. Here's Tim Richmond. He's in for his pit stop. Change the right side tires like everybody else. You can see one of the crew members up there squirting a little bit of ether down into the carburetor. Apparently, the car died as it came in or either ran out of gas and the caution is on the track. We have a yellow, and we do not know right offhand why we have such, but it's certainly an advantage for those who have not pitted, namely Terry Labonte, perhaps. Uh, the work of the yellow flag is going to mean a decided advantage for Terry Labonte. As the yellow has come out, Labonte has not made a pit stop, and Daryl Waltrip had. So and Waltrip Terry... right now is one lap behind Labonte. Now, Waltrip will get back in the lead lap as Labonte comes into the pits, but a tremendous break, as you say, for Labonte. Allison had not made his stop. Neither had uh, Benny Parsons or Harry Gant, so it's a good break for all of those that you mentioned who had not made a pit stop. This is going to change the complexion of this race. It's been a tremendous year for Terry Labonte. As we indicated, he has not won a race this year. But listen to this. Fourth at Daytona, fifth at Richmond, fourth at Bristol, eighth at Atlanta, second at Rockingham, and sixth at Darlington. And Terry Labonte could be in a very good pos position here this afternoon to walk off with a victory at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Here is Darrell Waltrip back into the pit area, Ned. Oh, yes, he'll come in for a change of left side tires now, taking advantage of this caution period. All of them will change all four tires now. They might do it at two different times. Uh, you know, come in, change two, and then go back out and, and change the other. Labonte is coming back into the pits for that very reason. So Waltrip, now knowing that he really has to run hard for the rest of the afternoon to make up what that caution is going to cost him. Here's Labonte back in for this time. Well, we do not yet know why we have a yellow, but we do, and we'll try to find that information for you. And have it when we come back, North Books for North Carolina, at the Northwestern Bank 400. Back to racing at North Wilkesboro, and Terry Labonte is being shown as the leader. Here he is in traffic now. Waltrip and Earnhardt are ahead of him on the racetrack, but apparently it is Terry Labonte who is the leader of this race, and he is the leader because of a yellow that came out before he had made his pit stop. Waltrip and Earnhardt running in front of them, but they are almost a lap down to Labonte. Second place belongs to Benny Parsons, 
third, Ricky Rudd. Fourth place belongs to the number 15 of Dale Earnhardt. And here's trouble on the front straightaway. Tim Richmond has spun to the inside guardrail, and you can see his car resting against the guardrail. He's trying to get it to going again. You can see him in there changing the, shifting the gears. Now he's decided to go backwards. He didn't want to go forwards too well. Now he's going to try it the other way. He gets it in the forward gear. So Tim Richmond's angling as he came off of the fourth turn. There was heavy traffic in there. And this will be the break now for Darrell Waltrip and Dale Earnhardt as they'll be able to come around to the back of the pack and make up that lap they lost. <laughs> that Waltrip was in the lead lap, as Bob pointed out. He was almost a lap down, but now he will uh, get to come all the way around and catch up to the pack. The reason for the yellow just a few minutes ago, there was a spectator in the infield who uh, became ill, possibly a heart attack, and they had to take that individual across the racetrack in the ambulance. So that's the reason why we had the yellow a few laps ago. Now this yellow is because of the Tim Richmond accident, and the pace car picks up the leader. Waltrip and Earnhardt were ahead of the leader, so they go back on the lead lap, and we are set up for a tremendous finish of this race. The cars obviously will not have to stop again. We have completed 302 laps. We've got 98 to go, and this should be a dash to the finish, as Darrell Waltrip has demonstrated throughout the afternoon having the fastest car, but he'll be chasing now Terry Labonte, who is shown as the leader. We'll take this break and resume our coverage in a moment. We're covering the Northwestern Bank 400 for you from North. Still under yellow, and the pace car still on the track. We'll take at least one more lap before we go back to racing. Terry Labonte lined up right behind the pace car along with Richard Petty, who has uh, dropped off of this uh, lead lap because of an early pit stop. We've completed 304 laps. Four leaders, six lead changes, and five cautions. And only two caution periods of really any significant. Ron Bouchard with slight ball contact and three. Really, uh, Tim Richmond, who's uh, most recently brought out the yellow, uh, he had the hardest contact with the retaining wall down on the inside here at the end of the straightaway, but he is uh, in the pit area right now and receiving service on that car, but I think he'll probably be able to get back in competition. Yes, I think he will. He's been in a couple of times. Uh, they trying to make repairs on that. The green flag is coming out, so he goes back out. So we're back to racing again. All right, and the green comes out. Terry Labonte leads them down the straightaway with Benny Parsons right behind him. Darrell Waltrip is third, and Dale Earnhardt is fourth. Running in fifth position, a lap down would be Richard Petty. Then sixth, Bobby Allison. Seventh, Terry Gann. Eighth, Morgan Shepard. Ninth, Ricky Rudd. And tenth would be Tim Richmond. But I uh, imagine he dropped off the tenth place because of that incident here on the main straightaway just a couple of laps ago. Bob, I think we should point out to the fans that uh, Richard Petty, of course, as you mentioned, had made it the pit stop under the green. He got a lap behind. So did Harry Gant. And, of course, Waltrip and Earnhardt had, but they got their laps back just as a result of this last uh, caution that came out. So that's why we're not seeing those cars up there on the leaderboard. Terry Labonte in the Stacy Chevy is showing the way with uh, Richard Petty right behind him on the racetrack, but Parsons is in second position and Waltrip in third. We have less than 100 laps to go, and at this point in the race, the drivers begin to feel the fatigue. The race car gets a little bit slippery. And uh, the excitement sets in for the finish, and it should be a tremendous finish. We'll be watching Daryl Waltrip and Benny Parsons and Dale Earnhardt all try to take the lead away from Terry Labonte. I think this is the best field of cars that I've ever seen here at North Wilkesboro. Of course, it's just typical of the kind of competition that we see on the NASCAR Western Cup circuit this year. Right now, there are four cars in the lead lap, Bob, and I'm sure that the fans are wondering why or how Waltrip and Earnhardt got back up there so quickly when they were scheduled to go around to the tail end of the pack. Well, the NASCAR rules, uh, the lead cars, those that are in the lead lap, can go up on the outside on a restart, and the left cars go down on the inside. But that permitted them to move right up on the back bumpers of Benny Parson, who is running second, and Terry Labonte. So Labonte is the leader. Second is Benny Parsons, third is Darrell Waltrip, and fourth is Dale Earnhardt. Those cars are in the lead lap. In fifth place, one lap back is Richard Petty. In sixth place, one lap back is Bobby Allison. Seventh is Harry Gant. He's also a lap down. Eighth is Morgan Shepard. Ninth is Ricky Rudd. And in tenth place is the car number two, Tim uh, Richmond. I don't think Tim lost him during that uh, little deal there. He was able to get the car back out on the track and then came back into the pits and stayed uh, within that lap. He's one lap down. And then the attrition rate hasn't been all that great here this afternoon either. I count unofficially 24 cars still on the race track, so only six 
have dropped out of the competition. Yes, and it's amazing, especially at the speeds that they're running here this afternoon. They're really turning those engines from RPM. As we see Darrell Waltrip now trying to make a move on Benny Parsons. He gets a fender up alongside him as we look back at Terry Labonte, who has pulled away, and he watches that battle for second place in his rearview mirror, knowing that Waltrip still is the man that he's got to beat here this afternoon. But Labonte, now that he has that lead, he has that five bonus points that we talked about, but now we'll see. Was he holding something back? For the end of this race, Walter has now moved around to car number 28 of uh, Benny Parsons. You can see he's got a car length on him as Parsons moves in closer to going to turn three. But we'll see if Walter can chase down that car number 44 that's been following him all afternoon. Darrell Walter was able to move by Benny Parsons in turn number four a lap and a half ago. So Walter now in second position and setting his sights on the leader. Terry Labonte, as we watch him come off turn number four, we'll be able to see whether or not Waltrip is able to close the distance down the straightaway as he was able to put some distance between himself and Terry Labonte when the position for reversed earlier in the race. It's been a race that's been pretty much dominated by Darrell Waltrip, but not right now. Terry Labonte is the leader with Waltrip running second. And Benny Parsons is in third position. Fourth place on the racetrack is Richard Petty, but it looks like that Richard, unless something drastic happens, is not going to keep that string alive that uh, has put him in either victory lane or second position in the last 12 Doug Western Bank 400s. A tremendous record. Previous race winners, Bobby Allison has won this race twice. Darrell has won it once, and Cale Yarborough has won this race twice. Of course, Cale not competing on the short tracks. Richard was certainly running fast enough, Bob, to maintain that record, but he was one of those drivers that had made the pit stop under the green, and he got a lap behind. There's just not a whole lot that he can do about that. Here is uh, Harry Gann in the 33 car, and Bobby Allison in 88. They're battling for position. They oh, oh. as they come over the turn. He just gave him a little love tap there, I guess you would say. Sixth position here between these two green race cars, green and white. Harry Gant and Bobby Allison. And uh, a few years ago, was green unlucky when you were right uh, racing that? Well, I don't know if it's unlucky or not, but you certainly didn't see any green race cars on the racetrack. It was uh, a superstition among the drivers back in that era, but it has changed so drastically over the years. Of course, Darrell Walker from the Winston Cup Championship last year driving a green car, so they don't seem to think too much about it. And it was always amazing that uh, you know we start the race with a green flag and it hung out in front of you all day long and then after the race they paid you off in green money but it still was a superstition again this is the battle for sixth place harry gant and uh, bobby allison i think we have the sponsors to thank for getting rid of this green superstition because naturally they like to carry their colors on the race cars and uh skull and uh gatorade and several of the others have green colors and that's the reason why we see green race cars yes all right we'll take another break here and resume our coverage we have completed 322 laps so just a few more to go before we have a winner in this event formula one Back at North Wilkesboro, the leader is Terry Labonte in the number 44 Chevy. Right behind him, Darrell Waltrip in the number 11 Mountain Dew Buick. And in third position at this point is the number 28 car of Benny Parsons. But the battle here is a good one for the lead as Darrell Waltrip now has closed right in on the back bumper of Terry Labonte. Labonte fighting that car, coming off of turn number four, completing lap number 330. The attrition in the race, we have uh, alluded to it a little bit earlier, but so far, these cars out of the race, Slick Johnson, Dave Marcus, Butch Lindley, Bob Shack, Lenny Pond, and Brad Teague. Only those six make that seven have dropped out of competition. The most recent... Mark Martin to drop out of the race, and he is with Ron Kendrick right now. Mark, you started the car in the fourth starting position. This is not a good place to be at this time of the race. What happened with it? Well, first of all, we broke an axle, and I can see right away that uh, this wasn't going to be my day. We fixed the axle and was going to get back out and pull out the best finish that we could out of it. We're still learning. My new crew is still learning, and I'm still learning. We're learning about the race car and these type of race cars. And so we wanted the experience. So we went back out and ran a while, and then we had more trouble in the rear end. So, you know, it, uh, 
All I can say is we're going to keep on, keep it on until we can lick this bad luck spell. Real quickly, how are the track conditions? It's getting late in the race. They're not, the, the track's fine. A little bit slippery, but they always get that way. The track's in good shape, and it ought to be a really good race. I just wish I was in it. Well, we wish you were, too. Mark Martin had a competition for Oak I think that young man has a very bright, promising future in Grand National Racing. He was a three-time ASA champion, competed in a few races last year, but this year is in the battle for the Rookie of the Year status. And talk now, about a battle, at, yes. look up front there as Darrell Waltrip tries to move on the inside of Terry Labonte. And Darrell Waltrip using the inside groove off of the fourth turn, and well, oh boy, it was a dead heat coming down here across the starting line. They were side by side. Now Labonte gets a little bit out of shape high on the racetrack and loses the lead to Waltrip. They'll go into turn three side by side with Labonte in the high groove and Waltrip in the low groove. Now Terry lets him go by and Daryl Waltrip takes over the lead once again. So on this lap, it is Daryl Waltrip being shown as leader. Labonte in second position. Does that mean, Ned, that... Uh, Waltrip has indeed established himself as the fastest car on the track and now will be able to hold the lead. Yes, I believe that now, Bob, because I think uh, Labonte is late enough in the race that if he had it, that he would have stayed out front and would have tried to pull away at this point of the race. Of course, he'll try to stay as close as possible can and take advantage of any situation that might come up and see Waltrip now moving on the inside of Jim Richmond, who has been back out there in the running, but his car not running quite as well now as it did before he spun down the front straightaway. There's considerable damage to that Tim Richmond car, but nevertheless, he's still out there in competition, being lapped, however, by the leader, Darrell Waltrip, as Waltrip moves into turns one and two on the inside, and Terry Labonte looking also to get around the Tim Richmond car. Now into turn number three, and is Darrell Waltrip going around the 70 Pontiac driven by J.T. McDuffie. This will complete lap number 300. And 39, so we have 61 laps to go in this race. Well, Waltrip is beginning to pull away a little bit here now. We heard uh, Junior Johnson say earlier that they had made an adjustment on the chassis of that car, and they were that huddle that we saw he and his crew members in earlier in the race. They were trying to decide did they need to do a little bit more later in the race. Uh, we saw them make that pit stop, but we did not see if they were able, if they did indeed, make another chassis adjustment. But it does look like right now that he's running faster than he's run all day long. By the way, we will be back here at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina for another Winston Cup Grand National Race later this year. We will also return to the Richmond, Virginia Speedway that we had a race a few uh, weeks ago. And we also uh, will be covering several other Grand National Races this year, including Talladega in two weeks. When we return here in the fall, this race will be called the Holly Farms. 400, and we will be looking forward to that race. It was won last year by Darrell Waltrip, who is about to, or appears to be on his way to winning this Northwestern Bank 400 here this afternoon. So we look forward to another race here on this tremendous 5-8 mile racetrack. Darrell Waltrip continues to lead with Terry Labonte right behind him, and we have 59 laps to go. Back with our live coverage at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Darrell Waltrip is leading this race. Second position belongs to Terry Labonte in 44. Third position, Benny Parsons running in fourth place, Dale Earnhardt. Fifth is Richard Petty, a lap down. Sixth, Harry Gant. Seventh, Bobby Allison. Running in eighth place, Morgan Shepard. Ninth is Ricky Rudd as we watch this fifth and sixth place battle. Two laps down in 10th position is Neil Bonnet, and the 11th position, also two laps down, Richmond. A good battle going on for the fifth and sixth place. Uh, Teddy is currently running in fifth place, but Gant has been battling for several laps. And look at the two distinct whoop, lines that take on the racetrack. It looked like Gant was going right out of the racetrack, <laughs> but uh, he took the high line there. Petty has moved down. Uh, earlier, he was running the high groove, but he's moved down low, and Gant's still trying to run high, just trying to find a way to get around the old pro Richard Petty. Boy, I thought, sure, he was headed for the wall there in the first turn, but uh, just using that high groove, and uh, staying right on Richard Pepper here, maintaining that sixth position. Richard Petty fifth and Harry Gant 
running sixth. Darrell Waltrip, as we look down in front of us, moves by the straightaway and uh, completes another lap. The interval between first and second place, and there was a car between the two, is about a half a straightaway. So, then I think that uh, you are right. He has certainly, Waltrip has, proven himself to be the man to beat here this afternoon. He has led most of the way, except for a brief period when Terry Labonte got into the lead a few laps ago because of a yellow that came out before Labonte had made a pit stop, but another quick yellow, and Waltrip was able to uh, regain the lap. Here he is now trying to move around Ricky Rudd and the Piedmont Airlines car. You know, one thing that Walter probably has in the back of his mind, Bob, and a short track is a good place to rack up a lot of uh, lead laps. There is some good money up this year by the Gillette after people who are paying, I think it's like $20,000 at the end of the year, the driver who wins the most, who leads the most laps during the season. We mentioned earlier in our telecast that Dale Earnhardt has led more laps than any other driver coming into this race, but as many as as Waltrip has led here this afternoon, that's going to put him right up there in the thick uh, of the battle with Earnhardt, and it could mean big bucks for him at the end of the season. Here's a good battle between Bobby Allison and Morgan Shepard for eight positions. Shepard goes to the high side of the racetrack in an effort to get around Allison. Off of turn number four, these two cars are side by side for eight. Into turn number one, Morgan Shepard with the high side and Bobby Allison low. Good battle here for eighth position late in this race. Down the back stretch, they are side by side. Shepard moves ahead of Allison going into turn number three, but he has the high groove, and Allison, as they come off of the fourth turn, will pull right alongside again. Great racing. Eighth position battle between Bobby Allison and Morgan Shepard. Allison in the number 88 Monte Carlo Chevrolet, and Morgan Shepard in the number 98 Levi Garrett Buick. Now Shepard establishes himself in seventh position for the moment, but these two cars still running side by side on the racetrack. We mentioned the lap leaders so far this year. Dale Earnhardt, as you indicated, Ned, has led more than anybody else, 628 laps. Darrell Waltrip, second position in lap leaders. Bobby Allison has led third most, Neil Bonnet, and then Benny Parsons. Allison is not giving up that sixth position very easy. He's making Shepard work for everything he's getting. Now Allison had a nose out in front that time as they came across the start finish line. So he's uh, making him work for it. This is a great battle here. Bobby Allison, the veteran of all types of racing, as a matter of fact. I think you pointed out earlier that Bobby Allison will go just about any place in the country that there's a race, whether it's a fifth of a mile track, and we covered him a couple of years ago, driving on the fifth mile oval at the Indianapolis Speed Room in a regular Friday night program. But he is just as capable here on the super speedways or on the short tracks of Grand National Racing. On the other hand, Morgan Shepard is also a veteran of especially the short track competitions, and he is giving Bobby Allison all he can handle here in the late stages of this race with 39 laps to go. Allison and Shepard battling side by side, neither wanting to give up that seventh position. Well, Allison moves back in front now. He has chosen to stick to the low groove. Now Shepard's going to try him on the inside. He said, well, if he can run that good down there and, and pass me back, let me try him. But he couldn't quite do it that time. And again, it appears that they came very close to touching as they came off of that fourth turn and uh, moved out onto the straightaway. Bobby Allison running in seventh position at this time with Morgan Shepard in eighth. Well, the race now is uh, 363 laps old, and Darrell Waltrip is continuing to lead this event, but again, it is Terry Labonte who is still certainly not out of striking distance, although there is maybe eight or ten car lengths between the leader and uh, the number 44 of Labonte, and a car in between. Terry Labonte has certainly demonstrated this afternoon that he has the second fastest uh, car on the racetrack. Here he is in turn number three, trying to go around Brad, who is uh, one of the rookie contenders this year. Brad is still out there in competition, and Terry Labonte is going around. Meanwhile, it's Waltrip that goes to the inside and putting a lap on Neil Bonnet, who is unofficially running in 10th uh, position at this time. Bobby Hillen, meanwhile, in the number eight car, is continuing to display a good first race here. Bobby, of course, 17 years old, and Ned has driven a, a fairly steady race. He has not been competitive, but he's gaining a lot of experience. Yes, he is, and he has been very smooth out there as we've watched him uh, run around here. 
uh, on and this is a tough racetrack to drive and for a young fellow to come in here and do as well as he has today it's very uh, commendable of the fellow Harry Hyde who's working on that car says that uh, he'll make a race driver now that you're starting at this young age and getting this kind of experience can be good for you the fans here at North Wilkesboro North Carolina beginning to stand now as they anticipate the final few laps of this race and as we indicated earlier, there are lots of Darrell Walter fans here, but on the other hand, there are lots of uh, race fans who don't particularly care for Darrell Walter. And uh, we set up for a tremendous finish here and see whether or not Darrell can walk off with a victory this afternoon as he has virtually dominated this competition. Of course, we're watching Lobotti move up on a couple of lap cars. Jimmy Means and Neil Bonnet there just in front of him. You mentioned Brad Tigg a moment ago. We saw the... There's a battle for third and fourth between Dale Earnhardt. He's moved right up on Benny Parsons, who is running the car number 28. He's running in the third position, Earnhardt running in fourth. But it's like you mentioned uh, Brad Teague. You know, we saw that car earlier that had caught on fire, but they got him back out there. And I suspect one reason that they worked so hard to get that car back out there is because Mark Martin, who is leading the point standing for the rookie division, had fallen out of the race, so now he'll be able to finish in front of Martin and pick up some extra points. On Mark Martin with 55 rookie points, Brad Teague with 21, and as you indicated, he's gaining some here this afternoon. Well, we have 31 laps to go with Darrell Waldrop and Terry Labonte still running first and second, back with more coverage after this. Piccolo brings you the seven-day weekend, boy meets girl style. Meeting over a Michelo can show that... 24 laps to go, Darrell Waltrip first, Terry Labonte second, Benny Parsons is third, running in fourth position is Dale Earnhardt. Those cars on the lead lap, a lap down in fifth, Richard Petty, sixth place, Harry Gant, seventh, Bobby Allison, and eighth is Morgan Shepard. And this is the battle for third. Benny Parsons and Dale Earnhardt, and this by far is the best battle on the racetrack at this point. And Dale Earnhardt moves to the inside of Parsons. Now this right away, and it appears that Dale Earnhardt is going to move into third, although Benny Parsons won't have any of that. But Earnhardt is able to stay around Benny Parsons, and Dale Earnhardt is now being shown in third position. Nice move there by Dale. Yes, it was. He'd been working on it for about 10 laps, and he finally got him in the position that he needed and was able to stick down on the inside and move right around Benny. But Benny will be trying to get that position back as we see Tim Richmond in the picture there, too. Tim's a couple of laps down in that battered uh, car number two that he scraped the wall with here a little bit earlier today. The car's running good now. It had slowed down there for a little while, but he's got the handle back on it now, and it's running very good. But uh, close battle there for the third and fourth position. Just a few moments ago, I looked out the corner of my eye. Bobby Allison, who is running, what, in the about the seventh or eighth position right now, he almost lost it coming off of the second turn. And a lesser experienced driver might have brought out our sixth caution of the day, but he gathered it back in. Ran slow for a lap or two, and now he has it back uh, under control running his regular speed. Lake Speed has been in and out of the pit area all day. His car now rests in the pit area, and he is with Ron Kendrick. What's the problem with the car? Why you I think we had a broken valve spring in the engine and developed a this there. We were running really, really well for a while, and all of a sudden the motor started overheating a little bit at first, and then, then it started picking up a definite miss, and that's what put us out of the road. Okay, Lake, thank you very much. Lake Speed, out of competition here, Ed. Lake Speed is a former go-kart champion. His performance so far this year on the Winston Cup trail, he was 41st at Daytona, 19th at Richmond. Did not drive at Bristol, finished 33rd at Atlanta, 34th at Rockingham, and 17th in Darlington. Lake Speed has picked up a sponsor on that car, Yankee Moores, in the past few weeks. That is a Buick Lake Speed hailing from Jackson, Mississippi. Darrell Waltrip is still leading this event as we have uh, 17 laps to go now. We're nearing the finish of this event. And Darrell Waltrip, it looks like, is going to come home with his third victory of the year this year on the Winston Grand National Trail. 17 laps to go. He's certainly looking, his chance is looking better and better all the time, Bob. And the car is still handling amazingly well. He can stick right down on the inside of the racetrack, but when he gets in traffic, if he needs to go high, he can do that also. And I'll tell you, that uh, it's tough to get a car to work that well. And there's the man responsible for it, Junior Johnson. 
uh, Hall of Fame member himself. In fact, I had the privilege of being inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1972 when Junior was inducted into the Hall. And he is probably the most knowledgeable man of a race car in stock car racing today. We have had five yellow periods. The first came out when Dale Earnhardt was on early in the race. There was a tangle between Lake Speed and Butch Lindley that brought out the second yellow. The third one involved Ron Bouchard, who spun and bumped the wall out in turn number three. Our fourth uh, yellow was for the ambulance who crossed the track from the infield. And then Tim Richmond also brought out a caution period when he lost control, spun and hit the wall on the inside of the racetrack. And uh, he, however, able to continue in the battle. This is the fifth place battle between Richard Petty and... and that that car that just they're going by Jody Ridley almost got into the wall you can see him coming slow around the track he's had some problems with the right front on on the car I think he's been having some brake problems there but he almost got it into the wall but that battle as you mentioned between Richard Petty and Harry Gant continues for the fifth position as Ridley brings his car into the pit there's Gant running on the back bumper of Richard Petty he's tried him high and low but he just has not been able to get around it Jody Ridley into the pit area. Jody, 39 years old, from Chatsworth, Georgia, driving the J.D. Stacy Ford, car number 90. We're going to work on that car while these two stay out there and do battle for fifth position. Richard Petty and Harry Gant. Both of these cars are a lap down to the leaders, Darrell Waltrip, Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and Benny Parsons. Ten laps to go in this event. Ten laps to go, and again, we are set up for a tremendous finish. Darrell Waltrip and Terry Labonte could either one win this race, and we'll be back to see who is the champion in a moment. This is ESPN's live coverage of the Northwestern Bank 400. We have six laps to go. Waltrip, Labonte, and Earnhardt are all on the same lap, and Terry Labonte is within striking distance now. He has, Waltrip has about a quarter of a straightaway lead, but Darrell Waltrip is coming up on race traffic that could very definitely play a part in how this race ends. He has about six cars ahead of him that he's going to have to maneuver around in order to walk off with the victory here as Terry Labonte sits back and watches Darrell work his way through the traffic. Here is Waltrip taking to the high side and passing Bobby Hillen off of turn number four. The next car he'll have to contend with is the number 70 of J.D. McDuffie. Darrell Waltrip appears on his way to victory, but anything can happen in the last few laps. We've got three and a half laps to go. Terry Labonte brings the car off of the second turn and still definitely within striking distance. Let's see how this thing ends. Waltrip and off the, oh, we have a problem in turn number three. It involves our second place car Terry Labonte and Bobby Allison. Labonte's car smoking badly as they have uh, sheet metal rubbing against tire. Down the main straightaway, the yellow is out. There is Labonte in turn number one having a very difficult time steering that car because the sheet metal is definitely rubbing against the tire on the right front of the car. A tough break for the young fellow who had driven a magnificent race here this afternoon, but something happened. Bobby Allison lost his car going into the turn, and Labonte hit him and hit the wall on the outside. You can see the damage. The tire is flat. He'll stay out on the racetrack, though, yeah. and uh, because they can't pass him. Benny Parsons is right behind him. I think Dale Earnhardt has already gotten around him, but he'll stay out for the checkered flag, I'm sure, because the white flag will be coming up the next lap. As Darryl here Walter, it is. Darryl Walter gets the white flag as we watch Labonte on the back stretch. But under the caution, they're not permitted to pass another car. And Although so, we see some cars passing the body there. But. And so we will end this race under the caution, and Darrell Waltrip will be the winner. The field is being given the white flag right now. Terry Labonte staying out there, a tremendous disappointment for this young man who has driven a tremendous race here this afternoon, but uh, had problems with three laps to go. Darrell Waltrip behind the pace car going at about 40 miles an hour, comes off of the fourth turn and receives the checkered flag from Harold Kinder and Darrell Waltrip has won the Northwestern Bank 400 from North Wilkesboro. Darrell Waltrip is the champion. He has won his third race of the year on the Winston Cup Trail. And I believe that uh, Dale Earnhardt is gonna finish in second position. 
And yes, he, uh, he was able to get around the body before the, the caution came out. Now, Parsons passed the body after the caution came out, so we'll see what the ruling is on that. But it was a good break for Earnhardt, a very tough break for Terry Labadie, as he uh, was a victim of circumstances. Let's well, see what did happen. Yeah, it uh, happened up in turn number three as the cars were battling side by side. Okay, Labadie tried to move on the inside of Bobby Allison, and apparently his left wheel clipped that inside curbing, got him into Allison, and then it slammed. Car number 44, Labonte into the outside wall. Allison did a complete 360, sitting right in the middle of the racetrack, but he was able to come on around as we see the other cars moving around to Bobby Allison there, but that brought out the caution that caused it to end under caution here today, and Darrell Walker is headed for victory lane. As we see Terry Labonte, how he's pulled into the pits, he'll be coming out of his car as he gets down to where he wants to go, and there's Walker pulling into victory lane. For the third time this year, Darrell Waltrip visits Victory Lane, and as he gets out of the car and we get in position to talk to him, we'll be back for that interview in a moment. As we continue our coverage from North Brooksboro, Darrell Waltrip, the winner here this afternoon. Finished for the day. But it does very happy Darrell Waldrop and the Mountain Dew crew here in Victory Lane after winning the Northwestern Bank 400 at Wilkesboro. Uh, Darrell, super run. Is this going all over the world? All over the country? Every place you need to go. You mean this is better than the wide world of sports? Much, much better. <laughs> I've got a lot of people I want to say hi to and thank. First, I want to thank the good Lord for a safe race. And I want to say hi to Joe Block, the Vice President of Marketing for Mountain Dew and Pepsi-Cola and all the people over at Darwall Incorporated today, and uh, good friend Flip Hood and Robert G. Now let's talk about the race. And my mom and dad and my mother and father. And it was a heck of a good race. <laughs> we, really, uh, we really had a good day, and everything just went our way. Uh, one time they had a caution right after we pitted, and Junior said, a guy had a heart attack, and I said, I know, it's me. So uh, I was really worried at that point because I knew I had my hands full with Labonte, and happened to make up a lap. I didn't know if I could do it or not, but I was willing to try, and then we got a quick caution, and everything worked out great. I hope the feller that had the heart attack's all right. Awful lot of fender banging going on out there today. Were you involved in it? Not a one. I don't think I got a nick on my car anywhere. I'm tickled to death after two bad weeks. <laughs> okay, Dale, congratulations on your I'd like to thank Junior and all the crew, too. They just did a super job today, Jeff, and, and everybody that works on the car, Mike, and uh, everybody back to shop. All right, Darrell Walter, the victor in the Northwestern Bank 400 here in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And Doug. <laughs> And Darrell Waltrip, uh, am I done yet? <laughs> <laughs> Darryl Waltrip, a very happy individual in victory lane, as uh, he pretty much dominated this race, and as he indicated, lost the lead a couple of times, but I'll tell you, without doubt, the Mountain Dew Buick was the fastest car on the racetrack. Well, we'll have more interviews and uh, post-race thoughts here as we wrap up our coverage with Darrell Waltrip, the winner here at North Wilkesboro. Our officials have given us the race summary. At the end of the event, we had five leaders, nine lead changes, and six cautions. And the winner, Daryl Waltrip, second position, Dale Earnhardt. NASCAR officials have indicated that Benny Parsons finishes in third position, Terry Labonte fourth, Richard fifth, and Harry Gant in sixth position. So it's going to tighten up the points battle. Uh, Ned, because Labonte finishes four, Waltrip wins the race. Yes, uh, Waltrip will get some points on him. I think he was in fourth place coming into this race, so that will uh, help him, and as a result of winning or leading the most laps, that'll give him another five-point bonus. Both of them got the five-point bonus for leading the race at one point or another, so it will tighten up the uh, point battle. I think we're going to see a tremendous battle all the way down to the wire. We see uh, Labonte's car and just a throng of fans gathered around. He had to be... Yeah a sentimental favorite here today after the race that he ran and then to have the problems that he had right there at the end as he and Bobby Allison tangled with just a couple or three laps to go and of course come to him into the wall and cut his right front tire down and that's what caused the race to go under caution and to end under caution. Well, it's uh, definitely a disappointment, but Terry Labonte continues his good string as he has finished no lower than eighth this year and unofficially fourth here at North Wilkesboro. We'll have more post-race activity and possibly some interviews from Ron Kendrick in the pit area when we return.
Back in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, where the victory of the Daryl Walter of Mountain Dew Crew continues in victory. Disappointment, although uh, in the Terry Labonte pit, Ron Kendrick, who has done a fine job covering the pit activity for us today, is with Terry Labonte. We have with us a very disgusted Terry Labonte running so well here at North Wilkesboro. Terry, just what happened? Well, you know, three or four laps ago, uh, uh, we caught Bobby Allison and lapped him, and Daryl went by him, and, and I caught him, and he didn't move over, so I just went to the inside to pass him down the back straightaway. And I got up, you know, about halfway by him going in the turn, and he cut me off, and uh, he spun, and I hit the wall. Uh, it's just uh, one of them deals, I guess. Uh, you did a, a heck of a job driving even after you had the, the, the tire problem there after that. Uh, tough to do that, wasn't it? Well, you know, we only had two or three laps to go, and, and you know, the only thing we had to do, we were still running second, and, and you can't pass under the caution, so so we made it back to the line, and the race, you know, finished under the caution, so that's all we could do. To find you, we found you here in front of the NASCAR, the NASCAR trailer with uh, Jake Eller. Is there some type of protest, perhaps? Well, they said we finished fourth, but, uh, you know, you can't pass caution, so that meant we should have finished second. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sure just a little mix up and we'll get it straightened out okay terry thanks for talking to us back to bob in the booth well it, it has to be very difficult for uh, terry to uh, to talk with us because i'm sure he is very disappointed and uh, perhaps a little disgusted at what happened well yes certainly you hate to see your racer torn up and i think he realizes he did not have a shot at winning the race at that point because mm -hmm. Waltrip had pulled far enough away well we'll look at the top finishers here and we certainly do want to extend our uh, thanks for great hospitality here in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. The race track people have just been tremendous to us. We thank them. We'll be back here later for a race. We'll also be covering, of course, the Talladega race for you in two weeks. For Ned Jarrett and Ron Kendrick, this is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone, from North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Yes, I'm